you need to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV, episode 83. 83, how are you, Scott Johansson, my lovely co-host? I'm lovely. Oh, great. Anything else? Look, I got a cold sore. It's barely showing, but... Already? Your, your mom's going to have to clean up her act. <laughs> all right, so anyway. All right. How long you been holding on to that? Like... <laughs> hey. As long as I've been holding on to this, okay? Uh, uh -huh. Oh my god. All right. Anyway, Already let's... in the gutter. We're not even, what, five seconds? Five seconds in? And you tank the whole thing? Jeez. Are you gonna taint? Never mind. <laughs> anyway. Hello, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, survived the family and or whatever you do on Thanksgiving. How are you, Scott? I want to go on record to tell everyone that Jason lied to me. On Thanksgiving? What I like? Oh, that I was going to call you? And you didn't. No. Okay, so let's pose this question. Okay, if someone says they're going to call you, and they don't, You're holding they me for one you, phone call? Or have they forgot? One phone call? I legit forgot. I don't even remember why I was supposed to call you. Well, and I don't know. I, don't get me wrong. I'm glad you didn't. Yeah. But See, oh, okay. It, All right. It's yeah. just a case of... I, I got Why? home from Thanksgiving and then I sat on the couch and we watched Yellow Jackets for three hours. So that's what we did. The TV show. Which I like, actually. We finished season one. We're on season two. Well, goody. <laughs> that's what we did. That's why I forgot. Ah, oh, anyway, everyone like the show, even though it's a disaster. Hit the subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. We have a Discord channel. Uh, the link for that will be down below. We also have Redbubble and Teespring, but we need to overhaul that stuff. But check There's out the people Discord. On Discord right now, probably. Yeah, probably. Who, where were we at? Uh, we are recording the show. Uh, but there's also other things I'm going to be putting on there. All right, our guest this episode, Scott, is model kit painter extraordinaire Jim Capone. Awesome. We'll and get, we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Yeah, on. And I've thought yeah. about having Jim as a guest a few times and it's just, I've never tried to follow through. And for whatever reason, because we put it together really quick, we had no idea after yeah. the last episode, uh, who we were going to have on. So it's yeah, we're excited. Everybody's standing, but yeah, <laughs> stay tuned. It's a great, it's a great, a great interview. Yeah. All right. Great interview with Jim. What's new, Scott? Anything? No, I'm glad the holidays are over. I, They're not I over. Hopefully... They just started. What are you talking about? Well, this particular one. The one over. holiday is over. Um, I, I hopefully raked leaves or picked up leaves, I should say, um, for the last time. That's what I'm hoping to. There's a fire going in my backyard right now. <laughs> still. Unattended? Smokey the Bear would be upset with you. Yeah. Well, it's in a fire pit. Okay. It can't spread. Still. So it's whatever. All right. Okay. What can uh, they do? I was next to a murder last last week. That's that's what's going on with me. Dismissed. I'm gonna have to talk to that guy. Yeah. Uh. So missed. missed him by that much. Yeah. So Chicago's a great place to live and be around if you live in the area. We were at. We went to see Skinny Puppy, who I'm sure Scott is very familiar with. I have other albums. Yes, and it's one of my favorite bands of all time, and they're doing a farewell tour, and they were doing three nights at House of Blues and uh, when we were leaving. So for those of you who don't know, Chicago is a uh, mess right now, and that's uh, since we can't swear in the beginning of the episode, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, House of Blues is terrible, first of all, to see a show. House of Blues, you suck. I hate that place. And it's at Marina Tower. So if you ever think of Chicago, you see the buildings that have the cars, the corn cob buildings, people like to call them. They're kind of Steve McQueen. There was a chase scene. Yes. In, uh, bullet. So yeah. that's where when you go to House of Blues, you can it's right next to Marina City and you valet your car in there. And we left like one song early because it usually takes about an hour to get your car out of there after the show. So we left and we immediately as we're walking out of their out of their out of house of blues we are accosted by panhandlers and we sh shoo them away and we get our cars and as we're leaving probably not even five seconds later we're leaving there's a man on the ground who looked like my first impression was he had a heart attack turns out the next morning on all of the news channels that the man had passed away 
And what had happened was one of the panhandlers who had just talked to me and fist bumped me got into an argument with that guy, apparently punched him. The guy fell, hit his head on the cement and died 30 feet away from us. And great uplifting story. Yes. Great. Happy holidays, everybody. And it really messed with all of us. It's not life is short. We always say that on this show. You never know what's going to happen, uh, especially if you live in Chicago. Uh, everyone keep your head on a swivel. Make sure you know your surroundings, know your exits. Look who you're talking to, trying to not be by yourself. It is. And it's a small community of people that like that band. So news got around pretty quickly as to what happened. And of course, in pure Chicago style, they have not caught the perpetrator. Uh, probably never will. And they probably know exactly who he is and he will get away with it. So I just sucks. That was my week <laughs> between the last episode and this one. <sighs> What else is new, Scott? I went back to work. Oh, the strike's over, huh? Yeah. You sad about that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm even sad. Totally they, they renewed me through June. So oh, please. really? Okay, good. Good. More excuses out of the Johansson of too busy. Too busy. I'm about to be too busy for you. I'll tell you that right now. Just hit the leave button. Boom. All right, everybody, do not forget, we have our live holiday special coming up on December 30th, 7 p.m. Central Time here in the U.S., uh, live holiday special with Brian Clark will be here. Some other guests will pop in and out, I think, as we go through the night. We'll see what happens. Scott, you excited? What? Who invited that fucking dollhouse ape? Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. He'll, he'll be here. It's going to be a trifecta. We're combining the shows. Great. Why? Because you need to boost your ratings for that one? Uh, yeah, we do a little bit. Yeah, I think so. But one of the cool things that's going to happen on that show is we have giveaways. And so far for the giveaway, we've had some very generous people here in the last couple of days. Uh, that Vlad Petnicki, someone who just sent us something for something else tonight's giveaway, sent us a War of the Worlds with a lighting kit. Uh, the original War of the Worlds, not the one that's. Yeah, why don't we dude, talk about that, because dude? You got you were hoping you, uh, this guy was taking a hold shot on. We'll at. come right back to it. The War of the Worlds lighting kit. We have a bunch of Horizon kits from Russell Clark, a Terminator's set, and we have a Inalay Crow and a Horizon cable that'll be given away. We have an Island Girl and movie poster plaques from Nostalgic Resin Productions, and by this time a month from now, we'll probably have a couple more. So, tune in for some giveaways. There'll probably be some trivia questions. Uh, to go along with all of that. But yes, yeah, Scott, you got lit up in the comments about uh, your War of the Worlds comment there with the. Mm -hmm. I just think it's great that I can like disrespect your poor mother like endlessly. And maybe one person comments. And <laughs> dear God, I say something bad about a horrible movie <laughs> and. Everyone crawls up my ass about it, okay? It's like, I'm sorry. It, it was jank, okay? It was <laughs> jank. I agree with you. It is not a good movie. It's not. It, it's not. The machines are cool. It's not a good movie. But anyway, you ready for a giveaway? Let's do our giveaway this episode. All right, first up, first giveaway, we have Zephyro. I had the name wrong, of course. I think last time we called it Vampire Zero, but that's what it says on the back. Of the kit. So produced by Paul Gill of Gilman Productions and sculpted by Jesse Rubin. Now, why is this missing? Oh, wait, there it is. The Wheel of Giveaways button. I hit the wrong button. Uh, Scott, tell me when to hit shuffle off. I'm shuffling now. We're giving away. Shuffle Vampire. off now. Uh, Who wins this puppy? <clears throat> Who wins Zafiro? Zafiro. I think we gave one of these before. Uh, Mike. Ziombo! Mike is our winner. Hold on. Let me put this down. Mike. What are the odds that the winner would have a Z for a last name and the kit would have a Z? I know. That's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. All right. Next giveaway we have. Let me close this window. Next giveaway is. Will this pop up? It did. Awesome. So the Rat Fink Zilla from. A producer given to us by Vlad Petnicki. My good friend Vlad Petnicki, who also sent me this. 
check this bad boy out. I didn't even show the kits for both. Oh, that's pretty cool. Where's that from? It's Wild Power. It's Kong Strong. It's Wild Power. And it's an uh, energy drink. Let me bring you back up. From, to Scott. I think you said Germany. I don't cool. know. So, um, little Empire State Building on it. So, Vlad sent this to me. And I was like, well, there's not much in here because I saw the, you know, <laughs> it turns out it was drained from the bottom. But um, anyway, thank you, Vlad. Very cool. And, uh, it's up on my shelf with my other uh, collection of eclectic things. I'm going to pull up real quick. This is, oh, there it is. There's Zephyro. Zephyro. Okay. And uh, okay. that's what we just gave away to Mike Ziamba. And then we have the Rat Fink Zilla. So if you're interested in either one of these, you're going to head over to, well, this was given to us by, you know, by Vlad, but it comes the way of, uh, I believe that's a Jimmy Flintstone. Yeah, Jimmy Flintstone. Yeah, Jimmy. And then this was broken. It was broken. <laughs> Paul Gill, Gilman Productions. All right, let's pull these names. Here we go. Giving away the Rat Finkzilla. You ready? Oops, I hit spin without shuffling. Uh, let's just go with it. Let's see what happened. And the winner is Glenn Travis, 7876. Glenn Travis. It's another name I've never... Mike won the favorite, but Glenn Travis. All right. Both of Yay! you. Yay! Wait. You know what? You should have sound effects and, like, confetti that comes I, down. Well, no. Well, that, that screen kind of does it. But I have this. We haven't done it in a while. Oh, wait. You're not going to hear it, though. The cheer button. The cheer button. Uh, Glenn Travis. Well, right, you should be playing that every time I make a statement. Oh, I do. Uh, so, real quick, let's do... If you need to get a hold of us, it is... The email is modelclubtv at gmail.com. Those winners, please send me an email. If you need to leave a voicemail, which we don't have any of this episode, the phone number is 708-816-4299. 708-816-4299. All right. This is from the Warthlings and Pestilence Labs. You know what? We haven't pushed buttons in a while. Friends, does this still work? There we go. Pestilence Labs. Two of my favorite folks. All right. Here's what they gave to us. Now, there is a... I have a major requirement for this. It has this... Oh, Disney princesses. Yes. Yeah, you Disney have to put princess. my head in one and Jason's head in another one. <laughs> Paint your own statue includes two statues, and it looks like I think that's Ariel and I don't know. Back it up just a bit, I could see. Who's the blonde? I don't know. There's so many blonde princesses, I don't need. And then the it other says on the side of the box, probably, but it doesn't. It just says Oh no, it does. Rapunzel. Huh. And anyway, we have a rocket raccoon. And we have a Star Lord. Now, do you know okay. where I'm going with this and where the Worthlings are going with this? Uh, on a cruise so she can get another diamond on one of my ideas. <laughs> These have to go to a kid. Now, since okay. kids aren't allowed to watch this show, we need an adult who has some kids they can give this to. These cannot go, and I'm not sure anyone, well, you never know. Or grandchildren. Or grandchildren. So how do we want to work this? Enter, spin enter, or first one to message me? I, I do a spin enter. Okay. So Let's see how many of these old bastards have grandkids. All right. So if you have a girl you can give it to and a boy, and you know, it doesn't really matter these days. But if you have one of each, a grandkid or family friends, you're going to get all of this and make sure you have someone you can give it to, to paint. All right. This is a Christmas gift or a gift to help inspire painting in the hobby. Disney princesses and some Marvel kits. Uh, type in the chat. Youth of today. Oh, boy. <laughs> I put it there. And you'll be entered in this to give away for a Christmas gift for someone who you think would enjoy painting these. 
You have to have it for a boy and a girl. Please don't take them for yourself. I, I would. I, there's a special place in hell for someone that would do that. All right. Sound good? All right. <laughs> Here we go. All right. News and reviews, Scott. All right. First up. Why I don't producing on a, on the fly. Books. All right. First thing I want to talk about is I just saw Joe Hudson post today that someone used his pictures of, I think Spock without permission to help sell print files. And the thing that, and yes, that goes on a lot and it's pretty crappy. Should probably, and we've ha- I've on occasion for the show had to pull pictures and I don't know who did it at least reach out and try and figure out who it's going to go to. The bigger thing about that I want to talk to is where he posted it. One of the first people that go after him said, well, the person stole that intellectual property in the first place. So it doesn't matter. You have no rights to it. And that was the instant argument out of this other person. Not, oh, we took your hard work. I... So anyway, people, be careful with your photos. Watermark them if possible, which, I, which seems really crappy these days. But be careful with your photos. Watermark them. I think this is going on a lot more on the 3D print side of things than on the garage kit side. But be, please be careful uh, with your pictures. And if you catch someone, let them know that it's not okay to use it. You'll probably just get it be ignored. But anyway, Scott thoughts. And, and I'm unfortunately, I mean, we've done it. Obviously we've taken pictures. Now, generally we're taking pictures to promote that person's kit or the kit. Um, and we try to mention the painter whenever we can. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a tough call to, for me. I mean, it, it's, if you can credit, I, I simply would say if you can credit the painter, especially like, you know, if you're using that picture to sell something. Yeah. That's, yeah, uh, I, I, you know, or if it's a kit and you're a painter, then, yeah. you know, the producer a, a shout out or, you know, whatever. Right. The instant uh, you know, of you don't own that anyway is what really irked me. And I like, well, it's the old recast argument. Yeah. I, but I mean, I'm, I'm going to honestly say, is, are they wrong? No, but it's a paint job. You don't own a paint job. No. And well, that's the thing. And you can own the photo, I guess, but. What is your really, what can you really do? Who's going to spend the money? You can't do anything. You can't do anything. somebody down. And and so it, it's just like the 3D and recasting. You can just simply say, try to do the right thing. Yep. And that's where I think we are. Just be no, but be careful with your pictures. If you notice it, let them know. They're probably going to tell you F off, but there's nothing you can do, but just be careful mm-hmm. with it. Um, the other thing is when I ask for a list of YouTube channels, to make a little credits thing at the end of friends of the show, only one person had emailed me. So if anyone else who has a YouTube channel, I, I went out and personally grabbed a few more. I'm working on the thing. I haven't put it on the end yet. Uh, if there's anyone else who wants their YouTube channel put into our credits thing at the end, send it to me at modelclubtv at gmail.com. The information for your channel, only one person fell through, followed through on that. And it goes, it's the same with, if you got something to promote on the show, send it to us. It's really hard for us to go out and find stuff every two weeks. Uh, and I know I can't keep eyes on every part of the internet. I tried to grab some things this time. And when um, we say send it to us, we don't mean you got to send us a kit. No, just send okay. us pictures. That's send it. us pictures. Okay. And make sure when you send us pictures, you give us, if you can, sculptor, obviously producer, price if you know it yeah. at this point, scale. You know, the more information, the better. We'll pass it on. All right, first up, 3D prints and garage kits. Jamie Sai, one of the best friends of the show, uh, his Facebook group is about four members away from 1,000. So by the time you see this, it may be over 1,000, but if not, let's push him over the edge. Head on over to Facebook, 3D prints and garage kits, and become a member over there. Some pretty cool stuff going on, a bunch of friendly guys. And that's Rob Madison's paint up right there in the beginning, right as the... Uh, banner on the page so please head on over join up if you haven't yet 998 he needs two more. oh we need two more i'm sure it'll be a thousand by the time this goes live but congratulations thousand in no time flat that's pretty awesome well done jamie well done 
All right, next. Next. We have from Nostalgic Resin Production. A couple of things. And the first thing is this. He's doing these really cool. He's taken some images of movie <clears throat> posters and maybe a little fine line there, but and turning them into plaques, a la nameplate style sort of things. And you go ahead and paint them any way you want. You can match the poster, do your own thing. Well, but they're 3D printed. I think the prices are going to be $20 shipped for each one. I think at Wonderfest, they are going to be 15 a piece. And we have some cost the guy sales now because they'll wait till Wonderfest. What a a great friend you are to this. No, if you want to wait till Wonderfest, they'll be there. $20 shipped. I'm sure there'll be a little. That's what he told me to say in the thing. Oh, okay. So don't don't yell at me. Uh, But here's some more examples. And we have some of these to give away on the Christmas special. Holiday special. Is the creep show one too? Yeah. It's pretty I have one sitting there. I, there's one for you. There's a mummy. Oh yeah. It's funny how it's not my possession yet. It's because it just got here this week. And then he has an update to his Night Stalker, which is not called the Night Stalker yet. I forget what he's actually calling it. But this is the old head that looks like Buddy Ebsen that we talked about. And this is the new head, which is all like a dead on likeness, I think pretty dang good so for those of you interested in that kit that's on its way and the other sad thing that happened is we had a live unboxing of the island girl from last time and we had to get rid of that because he had a little issue going on with the company but now things have been resolved and i think scott will have a little live unboxing here in a second so a quick update on his upcoming uh buffalo girls release here's a quick headshot of the kit overlaid a photo that's pretty good likeness coming along nicely so we have that uh so head on over to nostalgic resin productions for a bunch of stuff he's got coming out do you have that marianne kit i mean i mean island girl i have it open the box Ooh. i'm gonna put it on just your window you're gonna open up that box right now you want me to yeah i do since i did it last time and we had to ditch it <laughs> you know open. uh-oh I what do you get in the box uh-huh. Scott, here's a 1-6 test print for you. Thanks for your support and help. Dave. Okay. That's got the print in there, I think. I got a 1-6 scale test print. Okay. It's a little smaller, I think, the one you have, right? Yes. Okay. We have a 1-6 scale to give away on the holiday special. We'll be so giving what away. we're looking at is it's the base, the pineapple, the banana. The minnow, the uh, what we call it? Right Life there. preserver. Life preserver. All okay, hooked so onto a coconut shell. That's the base on a coconut shell. I never knew that's what that was, but yeah. Look at that. Okay. And then, bomb, bomb, bomb. Man, this is on one six scale too, huh? I think this is bigger than one six scale, Dave, but that's okay. We have the Island Girl. Oh, what a cutie. And or, as I like to call her, the girl that comes on after the professor in the beginning credits. <laughs> so, um... Only because it rhymes. I, I'm going to go to 3D printing again for a minute. In that... Okay, do you see that space in the pigtails? You know, in here and in here. Yeah. This is stuff I don't think you could... You could traditionally cast that, but it would be a pain in the ass. It'd have to be separate parts for those pigtail pieces. So, uh, really nice likeness. See if I can back her out a little bit, but really nice likeness. I think this is bigger than one-sixth. Put her on the base. See why this was a test print. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> so, uh, uh, there she is. Yeah, that looks great. The professor and Aaron Gilligan's Isle. So, right. yeah, um, cool. What else is in the box? Anything? Thank you, David. Yeah, there's, uh, we're working on it. Private stuff or? Well, I don't know. I don't get birthday gifts like you do. Um, <laughs> wait, what else I got here? Uh oh. Is it ticking? Okay. So, we got a large. Nameplate. 
Okay, which is kind of cool. And okay, you know more about what this is than I do, right? That's I. I he's gonna kill me. I don't know, and I'm sure it's from something else more than just a beer company. I don't. And my brain is broken. <laughs> Wait, let me look at. It. Well, either way, it's pretty cool. Okay, so I got two nice plates. I got the island girl. Island girl. Oh, I'm so dumb. What is it? I know what it is. Oh, I'm so stupid. Well, what is it's it? It's the it's the brewery in Strange Brew. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. The movie you probably know. Oh, wait a minute. I got a b- double camera. Scott, please tell me you've seen Strange Brew. Okay, I've seen Strange Brew. No, really? Wait, really? No, I haven't. But you said please tell me. So you said please. So who am I to? Okay, Scott's never seen Strange Brew. That's no, a great, I, this that's also great. came with my uh, fancy dancy uh, kid here. You got that, and they got a uh, sticker. And I got a magnet. Excellent. Cool. All right. So there you go. Dave, awesome. thank Thanks. you. I yeah, finally opened you, the Dave. box, Dave. Thank you. And, and thank you for the giveaways coming up here. we got a lot of cool stuff coming up, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, first up, from Gilman Productions and Son of Sheer Terror Society, we have Winter Phase 2 by William Paquette. Available now, 1-6 scale. Son of Sheer Terror Society. So William is going around and finishing up these season kits that he's got going on. And I saw Roy Barrel just painted up one. I didn't want to grab it without his permission yet. So there are some paint jobs floating around this week that you might have seen. Uh, really cool piece that complements the other ones. If you're into that sort of macabre zombie step month, like just pure muscle and sinew. And there's some really great stuff going on in this kit. So check it out. Check out all of William's stuff through Paul Gill. Son of Sheer Terror Society. All the links will be down below. What's amazing to me about this piece is when Paul showed me the piece, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I'm not molding that. <laughs> yeah. But it really came out. Did uh, it? Yeah. And and Paul mentioned to me he's getting an award for the mold. So I'm like, hey, I'll give you an award. Yeah, we'll <laughs> give him an award. So, yeah. You know, why? That's a good point. There should be an award at Wonderfest or something for best cast or like most complicated cast work or something which brings me to paul gill's next item which is tyrell and he's got the glasses coming so if you've been waiting for this kit they're shipping soon uh he did finish the clear glasses that's what's on the orange bucket lid over there he's got them sprayed and they're coming soon uh the the ones that are on his face will be a lot more clear once all of them are clear coated but if you're waiting oh, for this, they're there. If you want on, to purchase this, they're what? I talked to him tonight about this. Yep. So apparently they have to wet sand this too and yeah. then clear coat it. And they are going to do one just to show you what to do, but it is going to be up to the builder to wet sand it, clear coat it. Themselves. Yeah, that that makes sense because um, that's a well, lot of work. We'll, they will do it if you want them to do it, but it'll be an additional charge, I believe. Gotcha. And it's it's actually pretty very easy to do. So. Uh, do you want to mention Paul? Should we wish Paul, wish Paul well? Well, I was going to do that at the end, but we can do it. Okay, now. Let's do it now since we got his stuff going. Okay. Um, so this is by the time this airs, Paul will be recovering from his hip replacement surgery at about day three. So um, we wish him a a quick recovery. I spoke to him tonight. Wished him good luck with his surgery, and um, talked to him for a little bit. So, um, yeah, I know. think he's going to be a, in a lot better mood once that's over with. Cause yeah, he, he's in a lot of pain. Right he's, now. Yep. he's hurting. And as, uh, the last week, especially he's been hurting a little more, I guess. So, uh, so hang in there, Paul. It's going to be good. Jamie's mom just had her hip replaced too. She's going back in, in February for the other one. So a lot of hips getting replaced for his part, but Paul, you're going to do fine, man. You'll you're going to love it once it's over with. All right. Up next. Gigantic Aura Bust Line continues from Michael Berglund and Escape Hatch Hobbies. We have the Forgotten Prisoner of Castel Murray, painted by Rob Madison, 
There it is. That turned out pretty nice. What do you think, Scott? Actually, yes, it turned out really nice. <laughs> I love and the Rob used speed paints from game from not from Games Workshop, speed paints from Army Painter to paint this entire thing. And for those of you who have not tried speed paints yet, do it. Because they they look good with minimal effort. They look and, really and good. Rob is uh again just brush paints everything. Yep. So this is all brush painted. I love that bone work. And if you can see, there's a smaller picture down in the corner. It's a miniature, so you can kind of get the idea of how big this piece is. I think it's comparable to the other gigantic or robust they've done. Yeah, I still have to get this and one. I'm, I'm behind them. This is a nice piece. And it looks like the base is that exact wall from the kit. I, it looks very simple, like it's the right shape that goes with it. Interesting, so, but yes. Mm-hmm. Ah, cool. Well done, guys. All right, up next we have, let me go back to here, pushing button, not fun, and we have available in a week, which would be when this show comes out, so it should be available now. Next, in the quarter scale monster bus line, the Phantom. Uh, Absolutely the best castings ever. I'm reading what Mark put. So, perfect. Base is super cool too, Ardeth Bay and the Mummy very soon. $70 plus $12 shipping in the U.S. Best castings ever. I wonder who's casting them for him. Who is casting them? He is. <laughs> he's tooting his own horn? The horn yeah. tutor? So, yeah, All he's right. a tutor. He's a horn tutor. <laughs> that ain't the only thing he's tooting. Don't yeah. worry about it. The, the castings do look nice, though. Do you have this one already from before? Yes. Okay. Oh, well done, Pestilence Labs. And Jeff Yeager. And sculpted, yeah, sculpted by Jeff Yeager. Now, up next, then, we have... All right, up next, from Well Winner, we have Brack from the Space Ghost Show. Uh, I want to make sure everyone knows, Well Winner has a Patreon where some of these come out. This one was available through his Patreon. Uh, and the other one that's going to be shown here in a minute is also a Patreon. So please head on over to Patreon. I'll put the link for Well's Patreon down below. Uh, we're trying to spread the word. I'm going to show you why in a minute. There's some other cool stuff coming. But Brack turned out pretty cool. Scott, what were we going to say? Um, I just like the parts breakdown on this. Yeah, the, the part, engineering. Yeah. It is very nice. Very cool. All right, the next piece. Scott. Mark hey, Anthony you know, and who? I forgot. I'm totally at a loss. Mark Anthony and Pussyfoot. Am I right? Yeah, yeah Pussyfoot. <laughs> Scott, thoughts? Me, you're Mr. Cartoon Guy. What do you I, think? I love this piece. This is a nice piece. Dude, um, I think the thing that would make this awesome is if you were able to light it somehow. Run a wire nah, down there. Do that. Yeah, and this just goes, man. This guy's renders are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah they're not. They're not. I think if you ran a wire down that pole, put a little LED light up at the top, little bulb, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, or just replace the bowl with a piece of copper tubing. Yeah, that you can run a wire into. But, yeah, that's um, that's a cool, it's a really nice piece. Awesome. It is a nice piece. All right, and then we have Eric and Dana from the last parts of the animated Dungeons and Dragons piece that he did over on his Patreon, and I couldn't. It turned out amazing. It's just simply fantastic. And then we have the dream list, which go head on over to his Patreon. If you're not a patron, you probably won't see this, but here's some of the things that are coming. Pause it right here and read some of this. But I did suggest I want everyone to see it's on there. Godzilla from Hanna-Barbera. I hope it makes it one of these days. These are all things that people had suggested for the Patreon. And I think Well is going to be pulling from this list of things to do. And there's some really nice things in there. So I'm excited. So if you're not a member of Wells Patreon, head over there, sign up. It's not that much money. You get some cool stuff every month. And thoughts, Scott? I'm looking at the list right now. Anything cool on the list that jumps out? A lot of it is beyond when I was watching, but there are some things. Um, I want Jerry's cousin. Kind of crazy, like the Harlem Globetrotters. and Herculoids are on there. Xandor. Yeah, um, Mr. Tom and Jerry, Dick, Wally, Wally Raw, Walrus, Wally. Uh, Dick Dastardly and Muttley and the Mean Machine. That would be to have all the. Basically, he's got all the 
uh, what we call it? Yeah, wacky racers wacky listed racers. there, and hey, I would love to see that. Genie and Babu, Robin Hood, Daffy, Fire Tuck, Porky. That would be fun. Quick draw on Baba Louie. He's done already. Um, maybe they want a different one. Speed Racer, Mach Five, yeah. Xander, Herculoids. Um, it says Igor, but I think he means Igu. Um, Baby Huey, you you. Um, I can't wait for the Baby Huey. I I I can't wait. And then he hit some more um, Harvey tunes. Uh, little Audrey, Casper, and Spooky. I'd like to add uh, hot stuff too. The little devil guy. Okay. Um, all right. So that's all it. That's it for news and reviews. That's all I got. That's all you got. That's all I got. It's all I was able to find. Cause you know, I had to go find everything <laughs> and I'm just didn't have time. Uh, well, so I got some boxes in. I was just going to ask, did you get anything in the mail? I did. I haven't opened it yet. So mm -hmm. it's up to you if you want. What to is it? So. Um, the first piece I got today was uh, Mark Brokaw was running a sale on some of his big heads. Yeah. And I got the uh, This Island Earth Metal Loot. Yeah, pull it out. Let's just see. We have uh, Jim Capone joining us this episode. Painter extraordinaire. And he kind of talks about something I want to mention here. Uh, painting things that you've already painted for someone else. I have done two of these for different collectors. And I've always wanted one for myself, but I just can't bring myself to paint another one. And I really like the kit. So it's like, I have the pictures of it that I've done. What do I do? But man, can't wait to see what you got there. Mutant hand. Put that focus. Getting blown out. Yep. There you go. All right. There it is. It's almost, it's like the size of your head. <laughs> that is a really, it's like my favorite piece of theirs. Man, Mark, these are solid, man. Like, it ain't, you're not going to put your hands for this. They're hollow. But it feels nice, yeah. They're solid. And we'll find a picture of it. I know Jamie Sy just built one of these. And um, so I'm going to jack everyone up now, right? Okay. Very few things I do this with. I'm not a huge B-movie monster guy. Okay, but I like some of them. But, I, you know, I'm not just, it's not a big uh, thing for me. I've never seen this movie. Now, it's an iconic design and all that. I get it. Okay. But I've never seen the movie. I have a New Year's resolution. What, even I though it's not New Year's. I am going to try my best to not movie shame you anymore. To not what? N movie shame you. Like when you, I'm going to try and be nicer about it. That being said, it's not that I never liked the design of the creature. I always liked the heads. I always thought the heads were really cool. Uh, Mark was on a great sale on these. I don't know if he still is. I think it's over with. It's supposed and to be. I, I think, in my humble opinion, this is one of the best of the line, was this piece. Saucerman was really cool. Sundeman was really cool. A lot of really cool pieces in the the she creature is really nice too. I think those are yeah. the like the best of the best, right? There. But the this one I always thought was really well done. Yeah, and um, and again, I, I've gotten really picky about what I buy, but I couldn't pass up the deal on this. Yeah. So, all right, Scott, you want to head over to the workbench? Oh wait, I got another box. You got another box. Another box. Now, I was going to do a what's in the box on this. Yeah. But. you okay. We still can if you want. No, that's all right. That would require you to do some work on your own. Yeah, no, that ain't going to happen. I'm too good. So. Um, got this from our good friends. My good friends. Um, they don't really like you. Um, Mark and Shannon Worthling, Pestilence Labs. Wait, they don't like me? Have they told you something? Well, you're you. Um, I don't even know how this opens. Oh, wait, here. Maybe they're the ones leaving the tucky voicemails. No. No, they would just leave. They would just say, fuck Jason Walker, period. <laughs> so. Why are you so I'm exact about how this cutting your box? The box opens. All right, here we go. So. Oh. Now, I just want you to know why I get special treatment and you don't. 
You get notes like this? What does the note say for the people that are not watching the show? It says, Scott, this kit is packed with love. Have a great day. Love, Shanna. Okay. No, Scott, I never get anything like that. You're one of a kind. And I get my certificate of authenticity. No, no one else gets those, I'm sure. Igor. Well, yeah, signed by Wortland. Who cares? Okay. And. And I, again, this is, I'm just going to, uh, so you get the brain and the little container. Oh, yeah. You can store your drugs in. You get a, this is the hand. There's a hand that goes with it. I don't want to open that. Wait, right, my drugs or someone else? What are you talking about? And uh, so this is the third in their series from this fantastic movie. And you know, I just want to give Mark shit. Oh, we have an email that g- that involves this movie later on from Chuck Mocha. But um, sculpted by Jeffy Ager, and we have my eye twin, <laughs> Marty Feldman as Igor. Nice. So Mark did say he's going to be sending us one to give away. So there should be one by the Christmas show. So if you're interested in it, maybe you'll win one. Try and win it on the Christmas show. Tri- trivia maybe we'll have some worthling trivia to give it to win that on that show so anyway um and you know what i want to open the base because i want to see something because i i was promised something and i don't know if i got any proof of it hey uh bring that back i want to uh bring that back to the screen i want to put it full screen this pop this up yeah pull it up cool although we got to work on your lighting system a little bit better over there uh, look at this. So, I just want everyone to know another guy that's lied to me. So I'm looking at the bottom of the base here. I was promised casting number one. But I, I see no proof on here that I have casting number one. So, I'm going to raise hell. <laughs> I'm sure it's casting number one. Can you just pretend? No. Why can't you just pretend? Because. Why you gotta be that person? Why do I gotta be lied to all the time? I'm lied to by all these friends of mine. Okay? They're all lying to me. I'll call you on Thanksgiving. All right. Sounds great. <laughs> I get a call? Oh! Oh, it's gotta come back to me. Anyway. All right. Whatever. In all seriousness, this is a great, great addition to this line of uh, kits. And I can't wait for the next one do you know what the next one is no i but i can't wait okay all right workbench sir working on anything working on anything i am not working on anything currently um because it's been the holiday and crazy and all that so okay no uh, I've been painting this, the print I did of an alien. That, and so far, all washes, just on there. A lot more to go. But this was a nightmare to print <laughs> and not break things as I was taking supports off and to figure out how to glue it the right way. But I'm loving it. Uh, I found it on CG Trader. It's pretty expensive for a file, but pretty nice piece comes with two optional heads one with a clear dome and one with a solid dome for the alien and when i was trying to do i got the clear parts printed but they ripped when i was trying to put them on the alien so i think i just went with the solid um it was turning okay so far Uh, i have a a spruce story to tell today i have a spruce story too who wants to go first go ahead you'll like mine okay so I had to go down today and work on getting some prints ready to ship out. And so you know the drill when it comes to that. You know, you're pulling the things off, shit's flying everywhere. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, you have a support story or a spruce story? A, story, a support story, sorry. Okay. So, um, so anyway, I'm upstairs about three hours later. And I had the same glass with the ice in it, stuff like that, right? And I'm an ice chewer. Okay. 
So I'm chewing this ice. And all of a sudden, and you ever like bite into a hamburger? Sometimes you get a piece of bone. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's not right. Yeah. I'm chewing this ice, and all of a sudden, there's this piece of ice that I can't break. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on in here? Did something fall into my ice tray or whatever? I pull it out. I'm looking at it. I can't figure out what it is. I put it on a table. And I turn it over. And what it was is a little chunk of sprue had come out and landed in my glass while I was down there. <laughs> I'm lucky I didn't drink the freaking thing. <laughs> I'm trying to chew it. I got to tell you. That shit don't break. No, I've had those. They're all over the house now. And Jamie oh. steps on them. She's like, oh, my God, vacuum this stuff up. Uh, I have a spruce store, an actual spruce story. I'm building. I, what I've been building on is I have boxes of Kill Zone, Kill Team box sets. And I want to get them all built. And they have 10 or so giant, like, spruce size, like, like this in there. Like, there's 10 or so mm-hmm. in each one. And there's doubles of those, and I'm missing an entire sprue, like an entire sheet. First time ever out of all these that I've built, I'm on my last box, missing a whole one. So I emailed Games Workshop. I'm waiting to hear the answer. I'll let everybody know what happens. The thing is, it's been out, like, I've had this box for a while. I hope I can still get a replacement sprue. Otherwise, I'm missing an entire sprue. So it's, we'll see how Games Workshop's customer service is. I've heard good news, good things. So we'll see. Um, but that's where we're at. All right. Workshop, workshop, workbench is over. Our guest this episode, Scott, you want to introduce Jim Capone? Go right ahead. You know, first of all, for any fan, of any of Jesse's kids, Jim does all the built up paintings, mostly not all of them, but mostly. I've been an admirer of Jim's work forever. Met Jim a few times, but. We know who each other are, but we had never really like. And he usually sees you and, and walks the other way. Is that? Yeah. Usually? Well, yeah. like most people. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, you know, after the good response we had from last episode's guest, Danny, I said, well, you know, I'd like to have another good guest on. And I thought. Are you saying the other guests we have haven't been good? Is that what you're I, You know, we've had Worthling on. Come on. <laughs> so anyway. um. Yeah, see if we get another giveaway. These opinions anyway. are Scott's opinions and not Jason's. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, you know, I just, I, I like when we get some of the bigger names. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about it and I was looking at some of the, Jim's currently working on this Millicent piece for Jesse. And so I've seen some of the paint ups of the bust, the monster bust that he's doing. And I was like, Man, we asked if we could, I wonder if Jim would do it because Jim is a very quiet, you know, you don't hear a lot from Jim himself. You've heard Nate Jim's name, but you don't hear a lot from Jim himself. So I actually spoke to Jesse and I said, Hey, you know Jim better than me. Do you think he'd come on? And he said, Oh, I don't see why not. Just ask him, you know. So I did. And to my surprise, he knew who we were and he's watched <laughs> us and he still came on <laughs> and uh, gave us a good hour and a half or yeah. so of content. And uh, it's a really nice guy. And uh, here comes Paul, one of the nicest guys in the hobby. Yeah, he is. Uh, one of the I... best painters in the hobby and yep. a lot of good tips. Yeah, please. Know. There are some really good tips buried in this interview. So you, you pay attention. There's some good stuff in there. So without further ado, Jim Capone. So we are back. Our wonderful guest, Jim Capone. How are Thanks. you, sir? Great to be here. Just fine. Fine. Great. Thank you. Uh, what part of the world are you in? I'm in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania. part of Pennsylvania. Okay, cool. Is it snowing yet? It's supposed to snow not tonight yet. here no. in Chicago. Thank goodness, no. <laughs> Originally from Pittsburgh. Grew so, up in Pittsburgh area. Uh, okay. So Pennsylvania your whole life? Live anywhere else or just? No, whole life. Okay. Uh, what? I don't know if we can go into this a little bit, but what do you do for a living, sir? I was a art teacher. We and a lot this. of people go, oh, you cheated. That's why you can paint so well. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we... I was an art teacher. I had uh, middle school students for 39 years. I have the same career. <laughs> and 
I am so jealous of you right now. I can't even explain how jealous of you I am. Really? I think I think I have six more years to go. So you are retired. You're out. Retired. I actually retired in 2014. I am so happy and proud of you that you made it and you got out at the exact right time. Like there's. I think so. <laughs> holy I cow. got out just before COVID and the uh, teaching online and everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. So real quick. And we could end up editing this out if no one else is excited about this part of the conversation. But what, how was teaching? Did you enjoy teaching? Are you like, did your kids love you? Or did, are you like, oh, there's that guy in the hall? Because junior high. Sure. You're never sure. When I see former students now, and you can usually tell they're a former student. They have this certain look, a little smile. <laughs> yep. you know, and they come up and, hi, Mr. Capone. You're, I, I just, I hope I didn't traumatize you for life. <laughs> <laughs> and they usually go, oh, no, no, you were the, you were one of my favorites, or you were a nice guy. Of course, awesome. the ones who hated me, I guess, aren't going to bother to come up. But. <laughs> Are you, have, were you junior high your whole life, your whole career? Or? I, my first couple of years, I actually did uh, elementary in the afternoon and junior high in the morning. And I did that for two years. And then two years, I was eighth grade only. And then they opened the middle school. So I had sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and I did that for thirty-five years. Oh my god! Okay, I, I was in the, I was in the same classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same parking space. I I found my rut and I wore it deep. I was. About, I I totally understand that. <laughs> I was uh, elementary for twenty, and then they moved me to the junior high six years okay. ago. So six years in junior high, and it's uh, and he's I enjoyed it. middle school. Oh. Uh, uh a lot of people think they're a little crazy or up there, but I, yes. I, I they, it's gone. I can't say much since I'm currently, <laughs> it's looking out there. <laughs> um, it's different than elementary. I'll, I'll put it that way. I do like it. It's not that I don't, I like, but it's well, so different from when I started, but yeah, the, you, elementary, you got to do quick things. You got a little short lessons one day, you know, you got to get here. Yep. Middle school was able to spend a little more time, get a little more involved in what we did. Cool. There were a couple times I could have gone up to the high school level, but I, I liked the situation I had at the middle school. The kids, I was tall enough that I could still intimidate them. Oh yeah. <laughs> not, not me. <laughs> they tower over me. And yeah. the, I've had yeah. some kids that are like almost six, 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 seven, like huge kids now. Yeah. Um, but no, thank no. you. And thank you for your service. It, teaching, you know, is it's tough these days and to have made it out with that head of hair. I am super jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. All gone. But anyway, how did you find garage kits? Oh, how did this all happen for you? Yeah. You know, I used, I'm like a lot of people. I, I started uh, when I was little doing the uh, Aurora kits. I, I did a couple of those and other models that time, you know, uh, some some tanks, a, a variety of things. Of course, the military ones. We usually put a little firecracker in them and blew them up after we <laughs> after we built that. them. Uh, you know, and then got away from it. And uh, probably in the late mid to late seventies, I I came across gaming figures, little twenty five millimeters, okay. and uh, I scooped. I started scooping them up and painting those, and got into that. And I went to a antique show and notice there were a lot of old aurora kits they were selling at the antique show and i said to one of the dealers it's too bad they don't make stuff like this anymore and he said oh they do and he pulled out the uh son of the garage kit that ate my wallet and he showed me and i flipped through and so then i started looking and finding out and yeah but from minis i did ho trains for a while my dad was a big ho train man when he was a kid he was a kid in Pittsburgh before the war. He was one of the first people that did HO trains. And he talked about that for years, that uh, when we were old enough, he'd let us take out his trains and put them up. Well, when we were finally old enough and we opened the set, the billboards said victory in 43. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh. That was, I wish I hadn't covered them over. I wish we still had those. But yeah. The, uh, I enjoyed the buildings, the, you know, Modeling the buildings, kit bashing the buildings, uh, painting the little figures. Yeah, HO figures, they're, they're not very big, about an inch tall. And uh, yeah, and then when I found the garage kits, well, well I, I, oh, before that, I found monogram reissues. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I got to reuse the Illuminators. Oh, illuminators. God. And yes. So I did a couple of the old <laughs> monogram reissues. And then and then I found the garage kits. I think my garage, my first kit was uh, Horizon Bride of Frankenstein. Was it, I think that was the first thing I got. And then okay. uh, Rising Creature from the Black Lagoon was 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 soon after that. And which is still one of the best ones in Oh, life. it's a great one. I do love that one. So uh, while while you're talking, I'm gonna be showing slides some of the pictures you sent in and some of the ones I oh, grabbed. So you won't okay. be able to see them, but we'll kind of pull form pull from them as we go. And I have some, the Aurora the picture of the Aurora kits that you sent in on screen right now. These were yeah. not your first paint jobs, were they? These are these are redone well, paint jobs, or are this right out of the box you were painting like this? They were my first paint jobs <laughs> after my hiatus from. Oh, now you have to remember, I was a, I'm an art teacher and an art major, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and my major in college was art education, but then I went to grad school, and I mastered my master's is in painting and a minor in printmaking and drawing. So I did a lot of painting and kind of the way I painted on canvas, I applied it to painting models. I mean, I, I like to work dark to light. Okay. A lot of people, you know, I, I like to start with the darkest colors and build up, which is the way I did my paintings. So I, I don't think a lot of people know that when you do go to school for education, for art, you don't get a lot of time in actual studio art classes. It's all the other education classes. And I did the same thing. I went back for a master's to get some actual art time at school because you just didn't get it when I, when I felt cheated a little bit when I, when I graduated and to see that this is how you're coming out of the gate is just <laughs> ah, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The, the, those monogram ones. Yeah. They were the first one. I, I remember walking through a hobby shop and saw the uh, wolf man and I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I grabbed it because, Oh my, you know, my days as a kid, I had, I had these. And so, yeah. And, and I have been tempted to repaint those, but I haven't. That's 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 the no, way I did. It. <laughs> don't I? I yeah. We've had other people on the show that are mad they repainted things, and it's like I'm the kind of the same way. I like to see where I was and just keep that big long well, line of yeah. stuff. The beauty of it is just go buy another one and, re- and paint it <laughs> if you want to. At this point, yeah. But it's, yeah. So I'm going to ask a tough question, right. um, just so we're all on the same page here. If you don't mind, how old are you? 71. Okay, so you're 10 years beyond me. <laughs> so it's... Um, I'm 71, yeah. Yeah, so when you hit it, you were probably in your 30s when you kind of came back to it and, um, you know, yeah. found it. Yeah. And, I, um, yeah, and then teaching and kids and that. And I, yeah, it took a while to get back into it. And, and then right. I just kind of went crazy at it. No, I, you were I, there I, for the originals. You were there for the long boxes and the... Um, Oh, the auroras yeah the aurora stuff oh, yeah the old ones you know where i was again i was behind you 10 years so it was always the glow kits for me i had i remember a few long box kits but for the most part i had all glow boxes and stuff like that but um, well, i think yeah those those i have on display now are those are all the old reissue but i don't have any originals i was shocked how much they were selling for at that uh, <laughs> antique show i went to <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably way more now. Yeah. Uh, so it's. I'm going to put yeah. up real quick this picture of your collection that you sent of your ki- IKEA cabinets, just so people oh, yeah. kind of get an idea. Of, like, th- we're going to try and get through as many pictures as we can. I want everyone to pull up j- j- uh, jimcapone.com and look at the website as we're kind of going through. And Scott, you, you started a conversation and I stopped you right before we started. Uh, about his website if you want to continue that now that would be well yeah and and prior to um starting you know i talked to jim how jim and i had met you know we knew who each other were but you know it's i didn't know him well enough and i actually i i talked to jesse because i knew jesse knew you and i said hey do you you know jim better than i do do you think he'd come on and he said well i don't see why not you know i asked him you know, and then he was like, if you need me to put in a word for you guys, I will. And I said, well, <laughs> let me see what he says, you know. And, um, you know, so I was, you know, you were enthused about it right from the start. So that was awesome. And um, so my friend requested you and you sent me a link to your um, website. 
And I, I don't know how I never saw the website before because I'm a fan of your work. I, you know, it, obviously I've seen a lot of it being a friend of Jesse's and stuff. And um, I was amazed at, first of all, anyone like Jason just said that's that's watching. Go to the gallery because uh, on Jim's site because there's a lot of great eye candy there. Some instructional charts are there. Sure. Um, I was shocked to see the military stuff. I had no idea that, oh. that you had done military stuff. And now, you know, we talk miniatures. And, you know, you were right there at that age where that stuff really hit. And I was a teenager at that point. So you were, I'm guessing, close to 20 or in your 20s when you saw that stuff. Um, but it's half. just, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, yeah, well, the miniatures, yeah, they were, the, they, they. I was doing them before I did the monogram things. And mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons was a big thing. And at the middle school, we actually had a, a rather long lunch break. The kids had like a 40 minute lunch break, but they've been cut to like 30 now. But at the, the first year at the middle school, it was 40 minutes. And there were several guys who were into Dungeons and Dragons. And I had a desk in the art room that had the drawers that pull out. So we pulled one drawer out, set up a, and they used to come down after lunch and we played the, we played Dungeons <laughs> and Dragons. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, They'd eat their lunch real quick, come down to the art room. There were about four boys who came down, and uh, and we played. And so I got into painting the little gaming miniatures. That, you know. That's how I started, too. The, I, in the bottom right corner of that display cabinet, that storm is it a storm giant? I have that exact same one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In that, in that dragon that's next to him, I'm pretty sure I have. It's sitting in my box of, like, just unpainted that I str ended up. Oh, I stripped all my old miniatures, most of them. I and must I have shouldn't. about a hundred of them that I, <laughs> I know I'm never going to get to painting. Well, because then I found these garage kits and stuff. So, yeah. so. These are easier yeah. on the eyes, but uh, as far as. Well, and you mentioned the website. I mean, I, I, I put it together. It's there. I try to keep it up to date. As soon as I finish something, I, I add it to the newly added section and move things around. But I don't know how many people see it. Websites are sort of forgotten nowadays it is kind of so, weird yeah. how that's happened how it has people have either shifted to instagram or facebook and that's where everyone goes and websites you're like right are kind of mm -hmm. forgotten so everybody please jimcapone.com go check out his work while we're talking about it because there's a ton and we're only going to get to some of this stuff on here so and and you said you were surprised to see the military when i when first I started i was doing primarily the monsters i mean you know the old monsters that's what i love the monsters and and an, an occasional military piece. Well, the, the one there's a tank. There, there's a tiger. There's a tank. A tiger tank, and a couple guys on a wall running up to the tank. I did that for my dad for a Christmas gift one year because he got a bronze star for knocking out a, a tank. Really? And so I, yeah. And so I, I modeled the tank and had the figure running along the wall. He told me he ran along the wall. The turret was open, and he dropped the grenade down in. And uh, not, they knocked out the tank. So I made it for him. And when he opened it, he, he, he didn't say it. He just said, I can smell that tank. And uh, <laughs> Oh, my wow. God. I got chills. <laughs> that's, that's, wow. And I'm looking like, at it right wow. now. Yeah. So it, it, Jason, you can grab I, it. Yeah, I pulled know. it up. I got him. <laughs> that... And uh, I, a couple years later, he came up to me and he said, would you mind making a slight adjustment to that? And I said, what would that be? He said, well. I wasn't the only guy. There were two other guys with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I added I added two other guys to the mm -hmm. to the model. That's awesome. And he gave me a, he gave me a bronze star. He, and the, so the, the the metal on the model is from him. So oh man, wow. But I did I did a variety of things. Like I said, I really enjoyed the monsters, and I enjoyed. Well, I feel like some of the stuff I see of yours, Jason, is like you—you you like to add or you enhance the base or do other do other yeah. things. I, I always tried to make it different, make up my own. Yeah, and I didn't get much feedback or notice, and then I posted a couple girl kids, and man, yeah. <laughs> <I'll tell you. laughs> all of a sudden I'm getting emails and questions, and yeah, and it's like. I mean, and that—that's sort of—I feel like that's what I've become known for. But uh, 
I did uh, I did a lot of other things, and on my own, I do a variety of things. So, well, the thing about girl kits, I think why people are so enamored probably is the flesh tones. Flesh tones are so hard for people, and except for you, apparently. And um, <laughs> so, but when they see this work, it's it's so clean and it's so perfectly done. And I'm sure you can look at every one of these pictures and say, well, yeah, I did this. I screwed this up. And, you know, but I look at this stuff and I go, I, I just want to throw everything I own away, basically. <laughs> it's I'm well, never going to be this good. But um, it, it's amazing. I'm going through the Girl Kid Gallery right now. And it's just. Well, let's just start right here with the attack of the 50 foot woman. That, Cause that's the first yeah. picture I got. I got loaded up. That was, I, and that's a kit bash thing. That's, yeah. So uh, walk, walk us through it. What did you do? How did like, what's new? What's yours? What was part of the kit? Like, what did you do? Well, that's uh was it Lola, the Panther woman? Yes. That's what it is. I think that it's, was the name. Yes, Lola, that, the but, Panther woman. Cause I wanted to do an attack of the 50 foot woman and I didn't care for anything that I had seen. And so I found, yeah, Lola, the Panther woman. And I, <laughs> Cut her and put her back together, repositioned her, um, used some HO buildings, HO models and HO cars. And yeah, I, I still have the sketches someplace, laying it out, figuring out how I was going to do it. And I, I actually, I think I did an article on that one. I think there's a write up of that somewhere. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, man. Yeah, when, that's when, amazing. That is amazing. I do want to... It's funny you say that about HO scale, too, because I don't think people realize how small HO scale yeah, the really figure. is. And you start painting those figures, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I realize there's probably some cheating that goes into... Once you're in a figure that small, it's... You, you can yeah, only oh, do yeah. so much, but... Well, even my, my miniatures, I mean, I didn't get as intricately detailed with color. I mean, I, I discovered mm -hmm. using a glaze... Like I would basically paint them the colors and then I put a, a glaze over that would settle into the recesses, the darker, and then pull out the details so you didn't have to paint them. Uh, yeah. But that boy, my, you know, time, age is catching up with me because when I was doing those HO figures, I did a, a little farmer. And again, they're like three quarters of an inch. And he had a hanky in his back pocket. And I put a paisley pattern on that little hanky. <laughs> and I, I, I used a brush with like one hair. And if you, if you get a glass, you can see a little dot and a little curly line. And I did it. Back then, I could take my glasses off and, and hold it like a, an inch from my and, and see perfectly. You know, those days are long gone. You yeah. Know, the, yeah. I wear the Optivisor. And sometimes I put on uh, reading glasses under the Optivisor <laughs> so I can get even closer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to yeah. talk about uh, the mermaid. This is it, Ariel? Ariel, Ariel the mermaid. Ariel the mermaid. Yeah. I don't know if they're actually. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Um, oh yeah, you have four different ones here that I'm going to pull up two at a time. So you've obviously painted four. Have you done more than four of the no. same kit? And it's unusual for me to do that. I was going <laughs> to say, how many are you? Do you set a limit for yourself when people say, hey, or typically one time I and that's it? One, typically, I only paint one. Really? I, I do not like to paint more than one. After, the first one's fun. The first one's exciting. It's interesting. It's a challenge. It's a puzzle. You know, it, all the pleasure is in the first one. And after that, they just bore me i can't stand it. so if you painted have something you ever done like two at once where you're making one for yourself no, i did that i did so. that on a commission i i was painting the four. i, I got the four seasons that uh, the bus the was sculpted yeah and, uh, because i love the original paintings and i i wanted to get the set and somebody contacted me about doing a commission and they said i'll you know would I consider doing it? And he actually ordered the two models at the same time and sent them to me so I could paint his in mind. But even that, I I could do it, but I didn't like it. <laughs> I really didn't like it. So and, if you've painted something in the past and then someone says, hey, will you do this? Like not something that's brand new, like something you painted like two years ago. And they're like, hey, would you paint this for me now? It's usually a no. Pretty often... <laughs> 
for the most part, it's a no. I That's really good self control. I need to learn your <laughs> skills of saying no because and, uh, <laughs> I am I mean, one of those. I can't do it sometimes. I respect the heck. I don't know how Saul Alvarez. I don't know how Saul can stand it. He's done <laughs> seventy of those full size would... Reagan bus. I. I mean, yeah. I, and every one of them looks as good as the previous one. I mean, but I just don't, I just can't do it. I, I'm with you. I had a guy that would only send me Superman models of paint. And after like the 50th one, I just, the red, blue, and yellow over and over and over again. I'm like, I can't do it anymore. Well, and, and the Ariels, I tried, I paint them a little bit different. Uh, and you can you know, see that. And that's what I wanted to ask you. Like out of these four, which is your, do you have a favorite out of the four that you did? Can you say that? I'm trying to remember. I can't see them right now. Okay, but that's true. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thinking I may have liked the last one the best. The colors in the last one, the fourth one I did. Because um, they're all you know, equally funny. beautiful. I, I, like just. So I had done them. I did the first one for, it was the commission. I forget who. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, yeah. No, but I didn't. I re when I retired, I thought, okay, I'm retired now. I have the time. Why not? And I got a request to do it. I said, okay, fine. Yeah, sure. Because I'm <laughs> retired. I'll try this. And I didn't especially care for it. And and then I did one more and I said, all right, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> and the fourth one, and it was about a year later, I don't know the time. I, and I had gotten other requests and I politely declined. I'm just, I'm sorry. And I explained, I'm sorry. I just, yeah, the first one's interesting, and after that, I really don't like it. And the guy said, "Okay, fine." And then a couple months later, he said, "He he contacted me again, and he <laughs> said, All right, I I'm willing to increase my offer.'" And I said, "Well, you never offered." Well, then he said, "I was going to offer this much, but now I'm offering this much." And I, okay, <laughs> yeah. we all have a price. Is that what you're saying? We always have, we all have a price. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, the... <laughs> when I retired, I said, I'm never going back there. And they <laughs> called me up and said, you want to come back as a contractor? And I said, eh. I'm like, how much are you paying me? And they gave me the price. And I said, yeah, I'm there. I'm good. And it's... But having said that, I don't right now, I, I can honestly say there have been some recent things that I have been asked to do. And I just said no. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, you could get, you could ask this much money. I, for one thing, I'm 71. <laughs> right. And, and I have kits in my stash. And for the last couple of years, I actually have been cutting back on the commission work. I've been turning a lot of things that I've, I've stuck with just a few people. And I, um, so I could do things of my own. I recently painted, what was it? A, a Hellboy. I did a Hellboy this past year. I got that in the slides to pull it up. Now that Hellboy, the very first commission I got years ago was from Mike Falsigno, sculptor. You know, yeah, Mike. We know Mike. Yep, we know Mike. Yeah, Mike contacted me and he said, "Would you be interested in painting a piece for me?" He said, "I have." It was the General's Revenge. It was a Stuart Jackson piece where he's holding the head up and a sword underneath it and. I said, yeah, I was, I mean, I was thrilled. I was, somebody wanted me to paint something for them. And he said, I, I, I'll, he said, I don't, we'll trade. He said, you can pick anything from my stash here. So I picked the Hellboy. So that thing has been on a shelf for, I don't know, 15 plus going on 20 years or something now. And I finally have the time that I was able to paint it. So. I'm right there oh. with you uh, every time. Like I have so many things in my own thing that I want to do. And I, I'm right. I, I can tell I'm running out of time. Like I'm looking and all like, I'm like, there's no way I can do them all at this point. So this show, it eats up a ton of my time. And then when I, I just, I gotta, you need to teach a class on saying, no, I'm serious. That's the best <laughs> way to yeah. be able to be like, no, I'm not doing this. Hey. It'll be real easy. Jim, you want to teach a class and saying no? No. Okay, boom. That's it. That's a wrap. So. And, and I notice, I mean, I notice my eyesight's not as good. The, the hand's not quite as steady, you know, and uh, I, I spend more time correcting little little flaws that pop up. 
and uh yeah it's like okay <laughs> there's 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 fewer years left than than before so so i'm gonna ask some modeling questions while i'm looking at it sure. sure. it's, it's fantastic and uh yeah so jason now you're this is you can go get something to drink um <laughs> well hold on before because i got this hellboy picture pulled up right next okay. to it. and okay. next to it is the cool world girl with the cartoon characters next oh, yeah, to it. yeah yeah Who's that? What, how did you like decide to put the 2D cartoon characters with that? Because that looks freaking awesome. The way you pulled oh, that thank off. You. <laughs> yeah, I I got that kit at uh, I think it was. Oh goodness, I can't remember. I don't. Know if I, I I think I went to a Resentopia, and I think I got that there. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, going back to that wanting to enhance, wanting to do more. Yeah. Because early on, every single kit I did, I tried to change it in some way, add something to it, make it my own, adjust it. And I don't know, it just occurred to me, it, a lot of the promo pictures had her and the little the characters all around her. And there was no way I was going to sculpt them all. Right. <laughs> but yeah. I, uh, uh, well, I can, you know, I can trace, I can draw. And they're not, they're not really screen captures. And I mean, I... I actually outlined, traced it, did them all on the computer. I mean, I photoshopped. So I had her underneath and I did the lines, like good solid lines. And then there's the, the backs are the backs of the figures. I mean, you can't see it there, but if you turn it around, it's their backs. <laughs> you know, and that's a detail that who's going to see it. But, you know. But you know it's there. That I know it's there. Yeah. So... We know Let people that don't paint the backs of things sometimes, right, Scott? We know somebody. That this is, and, and he'll kill me if he's watching, but he's probably not watching. The very first show Steve Riojas went to, he sent stuff to my house, and it was this sea dragon. And it had a big dorsal fin on, on the back. It was Matt Man and it's called today. And it was beautiful. Okay. That, it was just, it was beautiful. And so, and he had sent it to me a couple pieces. And him and I were like, we had to drill like six holes in this thing to sturdy it on the base because it was so, it was not engineered well to where it would stay. So we got it to stay and he's puttying it up and touching it up at my house. He says, yeah. He says, yeah, look what I did. And the dorsal fin is on the back. He says, yeah, I forgot to paint the back side of it. <laughs> and I understand him. You know, the big joke, if you watched, is I don't build and paint anything, but I have everything you need, right? So I said, Steve, I have everything here. What do you need? He says, no, nah, it'll be all right. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, you know, I can't paint as good as you, but I know this is a gold medal, but you better paint the other side of that dorsal fin <laughs> or they're going to hit it. Yeah, it'll be all right. He walked away. He, I think he sold a piece at the show. And he got a gold medal for it anyway. Hey. And I don't think anybody to this day, the guy that bought it or the guy that judged it, knew he didn't paint the back of the yeah. one fin. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, it was base coated and stuff. It wasn't bare resin, but I mean, he didn't right. finish it like he finished something. Not as intricate. Uh, yeah. And yeah. it was, so it's a great story, but it's, uh, oh, right. I loved it. I remember. All right, Scott, about ask it. your hobby questions. I want to see what they are. What, let's. Let's go. Okay, so well, the and first I'll picture is you can ask the question. So you don't like to do everything twice. What do you do when someone comes to you with a kit that you own that you say, "Man, I can't wait to build this and put it on my shelf." Now someone's come to you with that. Do you... Actually, nobody's done that. I was always hoping something like that would happen, but uh... <laughs> really, okay. <laughs> um, actually, the mermaid was one that I probably would have bought for myself, mm -hmm. and. I was slow to start doing commission work because I hated the thought of spending all that time. And even though I was getting paid for it, I hated giving it up. It was, I felt like, you know, I wanted to keep it. But the, then I got used to the idea, you take the pictures, I got the pictures. So, you know, <laughs> sitting someplace else, but it's still mine. I, you know. mm -hmm. um, I've been, I mean, I've been lucky that a lot of the things I've done for other people were kits that I really liked that I would have done. I just don't have them on my shelves. I don't have that much room anyway. So okay. that works. So you like, and uh, and that's that's kind of funny. I will say that was one of Steve's things too. Was well, I have the pictures, you know, and so he would build kits for people, and he, well, I have the pictures, 
And a lot of times he had the kit, but you know, I have the pictures. That was the big thing. Um, the pictures of my display case. That's all I. That's all I have. That's all I mean, you have in the house. A display, lot there, that but display that's, case. That's all that I have, and you know, in the last fifteen years or so, the vast majority of things I've done. They've gone out the door to somebody else. So in the stash, could you fill up another six display cases if you painted? Probably it not. I think I have about 20 kits. Wow. So you're very selective. Then. I'm very, very. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I have group friends. I I knew people had seen them at Wonderfest. You know, they're going around and they got an armful of stuff running out. And, and an hour later, they got another armful of stuff. And <laughs> I have a, I belong to a local IPMS chapter, and uh, I, I'm the odd guy. They're all painting tanks and planes and ships, and, and I come in with the monsters. And the big joke is, how many pieces did that kid have, Jim? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my, I said, well, that one had six pieces to it, you know, <laughs> and they're putting together these battleships. and, you know, But the... I belong to that, and there's a guy who he's been coming for twenty some years. I mean, and I'm I don't think he's ever brought anything in that he's actually painted, but he's he's at just about every every meeting, and he talks and contributes, and <laughs> yeah, he yeah. says he does stuff. I've never seen it. But, That's the Scott yeah. Johansson of Pittsburgh. So, <laughs> so I see a very big cross section of genres in your. Thing from superheroes to fantasy figures to classic monsters. Um, what what is it that tickles Jim Capone's fancy? What is his go to subject that he that he looks for? I mean, is it just anything? Does it? What's the criteria to get into the Jim Capone stash? Yeah, I always look at the the sculpt, the the pose, the composition of the thing. If it was a Mm -hmm. dynamic kind of sculpt that kind of you know some movement in there that's that's always fun um okay. I guess early on i like the monsters i i i do like the girl kits i have a couple that i have bought that i want the, the most recent thing i painted was that deja thoris quarantine that's quarantine. it they, yes quarantine I I they, they did one and i saw that and i had to have it and that was strictly for me, you know. I, I, I just thought it was a beautiful sculpt. It is a very, it is a very, very beautiful sculpt. Oh, and I heard because I like it because it's not overdone. Like it's not fake boobs. It's not. It looks like a normal person, which I think is. And that's the other thing. I mean, I have had people ask me to paint some things, and I just the subject, the way it's presented, and I politely, I, I say I have a lot on my plate I, i'm sorry at this time i can't yeah take, take it on and do it i just and and there's certain sculptors and i don't girl kits aren't the genre that i do but i you know i, I look at them and i gotta say uh most of roberto's stuff is really well done um stuff he's done for jesse the stuff he's done for um filmy um yeah you know it it's just stuff. really well done and, and they, um, I feel like they've gotten well, like anybody else, they've gotten better in recent years too. And uh, there's there's uh, there's some more emotion in some of the faces. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. I always love Roberto's sculpts. One of one one I did some years back for somebody was the Jungle Girl. The, a girl standing. There's a tree and a vine coming down, and I really like that one. I love that one too. It must be the art teacher brain. <laughs> it's a great composition. It really yes. is. Like it's just, it's very it's simple awesome. and just yes, I love it. The movement, the movement goes up and through. and there's a great look on her face. And the picture that I have on here is kind of small. People, I, everybody, please go to the website jimcapone.com. Look at the pictures up close. Pull up your tablet while you're looking because they're little. They're not huge pictures on here, but that is a great piece. Really good yeah. piece. Yeah, I was thrilled there. There, there are some kits that when I see the, uh, you know, coming soon section or whatever, I, and I think, boy, I hope somebody asks me to paint that one. <laughs> so I don't have to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> have I, you ever I, painted anything that someone sent you and you said, 
I got to get that for myself. Anything or no? Or generally? No, because I've painted it. Once it's go. painted, I don't I don't have to have it at home. I don't. I, yeah, wow. I, well, that's cool. Though. I have the picture. Once I take the pictures, I'm, I breathe the sigh of relief. It's like, all right, it's documented. There's the proof I did it. It's <laughs> It's here. Okay. So I'll ask you this, because your work is so, to me, clean. And when I say clean, it's the lines on a superhero kit. Um, I'm looking at your Wonder Woman, the, the Wonder Woman's you did for Jesse and the Wonder Woman in the gown, oh, which yeah. to me is just, first of all, of all the female kits I own, that's my favorite female kit. Yeah. Because I just think it's it's so well done. Even if it wasn't Wonder Woman, I would right. look at that and just, I really like it. What do you use to mask? I, I mean, are you a silly putty guy or do you have I've your own? I've become strictly silly putty. Early on, I used to use liquid frisket. Okay. I used to paint that stuff on. But uh, 95% of the time, it's silly putty. Okay. Yeah. I, and what I do is I'll do the edging first. Like like my base color, whatever the you know whatever the base color is going to be, I get those lines on there nice and clean, and then I will mask up to the app with the silly putty. So if the silly putty is not perfect, I already have a clean line there. Okay. Yeah. My question. Let's see if Scott has the same one. Probably not, because this is more of a painter's question, and it's not a dig. Oh, it's a dig. A little bit. You're not in looking at the pictures that I found. There's a lot of white. You're not afraid to paint white. White is one of those colors that drives me insane for the coverage and for making mistakes on top of it. Any secrets that you have? Because we've asked this of, I think it was Joe Hudson and a couple other people have come on. What's your go-to white paint? Any secrets to painting white? Like this gown on this Wonder Woman. What is your process for white? I think probably the most important Part is what you put underneath it or what you put down before it or you know the shadow areas i mean the white's boring but you know i, I did a ultraviolet and she's wearing all white too i'll pull that up too while you're talking i'm not the moment to turn away looking at the screen she's wearing all white she's got the white pants the white jacket the white top and it's it's a lot of white but i tried to use different different base Basically, like I said, I start dark. So I, the darkest, the darkest shadow you see on there, that's what the whole thing looks. So I would paint like a a blue gray, uh, a, a a black gray, a brownish gray, different different shades of warm and cold grays, and then lighten that up. And then you know, at the end, I'm putting just plain white okay. over top. But it's all the colors underneath that are still showing. And, mm -hmm. and I always leave. You got to leave some of the base colors down. I put the base color down and then the next level, the next level. And even if I cover 95% of it, there's still some of that underneath stuff there. And if I'm, if I make a mistake or I don't like a color, I, I have never stripped the kit and started over. I just kind of rework the section. And again, let some of the, what's, what's there affects the color that's on top. It, it comes through. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't really see it. You you can't point and say, well, this is what I, but if you put a kit that's painted that way next to one, that's just flat colors here and there. You can you can see the depth of color. You can see the richness of the color. Because I, I have purposely not bought a kit because it would have required a lot of white, like stormtroopers well, and stuff. I'm like, I'm not even <clears throat> dealing because then you see I'm that one little it. speck from your airbrush that shot out on there. Oh, like, yes. I'm like, I oh, know. <laughs> It's yeah, so... I, and I have that problem. It happened with me just two days ago where I've got it nice, even misting, and then you get a little spit, and there's a couple little. Oh. I've gotten to where I'm able to. You can hide them. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I don't know. People, maybe everybody knows this. Maybe, uh, an occasional, you're almost done, and you get this nasty little spit that goes on an area of flesh that you, is it done. And you, I. I <laughs> I put 12 to 15 layers building up to get the final thing. And there's no way I can go. I'm not going to go back and redo the whole thing. So I use watercolors and burnt sienna, white. I mean, those two give you a pretty close flesh tone. 
And the, the trick is to use a very fine brush and, and stipple little, little tiny dots. Don't try and put a solid patch over the mistake. Little dot, 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 dot. And then slightly different dot, 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 dot. Tiny little dots until I finally, and it sort of disappears. It's like camouflage. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. <laughs> well, I just, I look at all the, the work on the white that I'm looking at on a few of these too. And it's um, what you've mastered what so many people fail at and i'm sure i would fail miserably is you don't notice it and that's the key you don't want to notice it and it, it's just your shadows a, a lot of people overdo the white like they'll over wash or they'll over dry brush and not like you just said built up slow dark to lighter to lighter to lighter to lighter to lighter they'll do maybe you just said 15 where they'll do four and say yeah that's good you know that and it, it's especially on white and probably flesh tones too you just can't get away with it, it it's not gonna happen i don't think and another it? thing like with white if if you start with a darker color like i'll typically i use a blue a blue gray some some a light light blue when you do that and you paint the whole thing and you start putting white over it it doesn't cover very well mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're you're forced to keep putting more and more on. I waste a lot. I'm sure people think I waste a lot of paint. I mean, I, like I said, I cover the whole thing with the darkest color, which some people just go to the darkest areas, but I just. Well, that's yeah. how most miniature painters this, these days, not most, but most people prime in black and work their way that's, up from black and, and use that, that as their that. initial shadow. And that's. I, I like doing that. It, it does. At first, it takes a while because I was so used to Garage Kit Brain going back to miniatures from garage kits of everything has to start gray, gray primer, gray primer, instead of, you know, mixing it up a bit. Well, I, I, I still use the gray primer unless I'm doing skin tones. If it's flesh, I'll put the, I use the rust color. I feel like the gray, when I start putting the skin tones on the colors, they, they have a greenish tinge to them because yeah. the gray underneath. So the rust primer works better for me. Um, another great tip. <laughs> another another reason I like to go dark to light. If you, if you think about the kit, and I try to explain to people, the hardest parts to get to. If you start light and you're going dark, the hardest parts to get to are those recessed in underneath parts that you're going to mm -hmm. accidentally spray dark where you don't want it. So if you paint everything dark to start with, say you have your your objects in front of you here. And, and you paint these inside parts dark. Then I spray the medium around here and I, I work up to my lightest colors. Yeah. So my lightest highlight colors are coming down and it's hitting the object like light hits it, the way the light hits it. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to worry about this getting in those recessed areas. They're, they're dark. They're... So to me, it's easier to go yeah. that way. I agree. And I think... I've been trying to focus people's brains that way too on the show is you got to think of it as light and where's your light coming from all the time is a big, huge thing. Well, yeah. And it seems like the, the guys that paint the minis have really got that down to, you know, and you know, a lot of the garage kid guys don't want to hear it, but some of the work those guys are doing is there's some gorgeous miniature work. I, and it's when you consider how big they are, <laughs> it just makes you want to punch them. amazing. Uh, uh, I want to pull up I have a horror story oh, about miniatures real quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, what is it? The, there's a show in Philadelphia, MCF, Miniature Collectors in America. I don't know. But it's a big show in Philadelphia area, suburbs. And uh, I, I went a couple times and, and saw and a bunch of guys from New York came down, put some pieces. I put some things in. But I was enjoying the show, going around, taking pictures. And I was leaning over with my camera and I stood up and here the strap on my camera hooked on a miniature and lifted it up and it fell and the arm broke off. And I'm standing here. I know better than this. <laughs> I'm horrified. I'm standing here and everybody is looking at me. You know, you know. Dumbass. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and then there's just a cloud of smoke where you were standing. <laughs> you just ran. And and that's when I took the the strap off my camera. When I take pictures now, there's no strap on the camera. But that fortunately, it broke right on a. It 
came off right on a scene with the clothing and an arm and it had been judged already. So oh. It was, uh, so, yeah. oh my God. What'd the guy say? <laughs> was, was he? Fortunately, I didn't see the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the con, I went to the table, the head, you know, the judge's table and I reported myself and, and they went, <laughs> give me your hand. So please like, arrest me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Such an oh idiot. Oh my gosh. I want to pull up these two pictures of, I'm not sure the names that we just gave this kid away a while, like not too long ago of from, from Zots, 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 the Zot. vampire girl with the wall coming out from the hall, like. Oh, the girl be like behind the wall. Yeah. Looking, where yeah. she's like leaning where right. you only see like one arm. And then the other one I have next to it is I think it's one of Jesse's pieces where she looks kind of like has purplish tint to her skin. Um, and both of them have like a kind of vampire-y kind of look to it with the skin tones best way to achieve that kind of look kind of like your undead flesh tone what do you kind of go for paint wise when you're doing that purples and grays that's what i did underneath and and again I, you can be the way i go dark to light you can be very liberal with the color i mean they, they can be too intense even but because i'm building up with layers and transparent layers it it kind of tones it down as you go. Um, so they're not as harsh by the time I get to the end. Okay. I know I had a, a painting instructor in college and he said, you know, if it's, if things aren't working, throw some red in there, you know, just <laughs> throw something crazy in there just to kick you out of what you're doing and, and do something else. And, and again, you cover over, but I'm, I should get my iPad out so I can look at these pictures at the same <laughs> time and, know what we're talking about uh, it's, it's the, uh, that um the one for jesse is it the girl with her hand up on her like this side? and she has the red yeah, sash around her victoria. waist victoria yeah. yep. i think it was victoria he did that that was his good and evil series and i had done i had done one like there was a beauty one i did her first and then later he asked me if i could paint her like more evil or sinister <laughs> so yeah so the colors are darker I made it a point to leave the skin a little more modeled. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because we have this, these ideas about skin tones, you know, monsters, you can get away, you know, all modeled and, and rough underneath it, but women, girls, we expect it to be perfectly smooth and you know, evenly. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, with that Victoria one, I was deliberately a little more, you could see the modeling underneath and, and it works. I like how you did that. I think it's yeah. it works for that character. More purples and blues and the grays. So reference. Right? Let me ask you this question. This is this will be a tough one to answer. No. I won't. bet you're in the same question. I know you were a fan of Jesse's paints. You you <laughs> use Jesse's question. paints quite a bit. What's your go to now that he's not making them anymore? Uh, uh, have you found anything that you like? Or is it still in a, a work in progress? Trying uh, it's to... still a work in progress. I mean, I had a lot of them. I, I gathered up some more at Wonderfest, but some of the some of my go to colors. I, I love this gold gold toner. It, it's it. I think he has it listed as a. I never considered it an opaque color. It was more of a of a transparent color, and the way I paint figures, the way I paint, yeah, yeah, gold toner. I love that. Um, do you I want to 20 bucks guy. for that bottle? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say, hey, what do you want? <laughs> I got a whole bottle right there, buddy. I, f I found something that might work. Liquitex makes some inks or some sprays. And there's a, I, there, there's a color that's very close to the gold toner. So I may be using that. That's what I'm looking at, some different sprays. Um, but I get the values. I get the values worked out. I get the shade, the, the basic dark, medium lights. And a lot of times they look tasty still or un, not quite alive. And so that's when I start going in with the transparents and adding blush and adding warm areas and yellows. It's just thin mists of color. And, mm -hmm. and again, you can't pick any one out, but the overlapping layers and they all it blends everything together. And uh... I think you touched on something really important there because it, it's one of the major things. Like if I'm looking at the Wonderfest contest, 
there's so many kits that I think skip that step sometimes where they're like, you know, bronze to silver, where they could be gold if they would have went and put a little pink on the knuckles or put a little blush on the cheeks or on the end of a nose, like kind of thing where it's like to give it that pop to make it look a little more lively. And you're right. The transparent colors are the ones to do that. I would suggest to you to replace the gold toner is to look through some of the newer contrast paints that are out that are similar to inks. Uh, Citadel makes them. There's contrast. There's speed paints from Army Painter. And there's a couple other brands that have some transparents that might match. And if I find one that's close, I'll let you know. But check those um, out. Yeah, I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm looking around. trying. I've asked a couple people, you know, what do you use? <laughs> uh, I mean, I used his. I, I like them. I mean, I was using them back when it was kit builders. Yeah. I've seen the life. And it was the same. Yeah, I still have I some of the so, kit I still have some of my life tones. Too. Yeah. Freestyle. Yep. I still have a few of those. Um and and well, and I mean, business. I mean, honestly, Jesse, he was selling his paints and he was selling the models. And when I painted the kit for him, he wanted me to use his paints. You know, yeah, and that's, that's for fine. sure. I, mean, I could, you know, this was done with his paint. And now he understood there were some colors that he did not have, and there were some things that I had to go elsewhere. As long as he felt like, as long as ninety to ninety-five percent of it was his paints, that's fine. And yeah. and that yeah, that's the way I worked out. Most of the time, sometimes it's all hundred percent his. But then he, he's had some issues in recent years. You probably heard all this, you know. I mean, with the the company and the person who made them, and that's a whole story. But the, yeah, some of the newer ones. Recent years, the, the paint was sticking at the bottom. He had problems with yeah. the introduction of it. Mm. And I, so, yeah, now he's out of it completely. So I think a good one of the pictures here that I just pulled up, it's a great example of kind of what you're talking about, is your London After Midnight piece. Um, oh. And how, if you just look at everyone at home, pull it up on the website, jimcapone.com. If you can't see it close here, his hand, if you look at the hand that's kind of clutching his chest, there's... The, a good like layer of transparent different colors on those fingers and then even the skin around his eyes you have some transparent reds there's some transparent greens kind of over that skin and it's just beautiful hey, now, i'm gonna i'm gonna surprise you here that london after midnight that's the saul's yeah screen mm -hmm. okay i did that for a jersey fest and they asked me to teach the class no airbrush really no airbrush that was all sponges and see that's paintbrush. That's how I paint. I'm not like, I've gotten away from my airbrush quite a bit, but I still how did, so just you're so most, are you be, mostly an airbrush guy or are you mostly a, I, I am. I, yeah. I, I, who was, I heard Jeff camp hardly uses it or whatever. Yeah. I, I probably do 90%, 95% is airbrushed. I use, I use it a lot. And then I'll do detail work. I go in with watercolors. I, I love the watercolors because if you make a mistake, it's easy to clean it up, wipe it off. You know, once you spray it and set it, it's good. So, is there something different you set watercolors with, finish wise, spray wise? No, no. Nothing? Well, I haven't. I haven't had any problem. I mean, I used to use the uh, dull coat, but that's hard to come by anymore. Yeah. And lately, I've just been using Krylon matte. Yeah, it's and I've never had any problem if I put it on a clean surface, if it's on and then I spray it. I I haven't had anything come off. Cool. That I'm aware of, of course, a lot of people <laughs> have my stuff. So maybe the whole yeah, they're all like, what is this chipping? Say, Why is this color coming <laughs> off? <laughs> so I'm looking at this London after midnight off your website, the bigger picture. And it always amazes me. When when guys tell me, yeah, I painted this with just brush, how smooth they get it without a brush mark at all. What's the secret to that? What is the secret thin. to that? Thin? It's okay. gotta have it thin. You gotta make sure it's thin down enough. And and you might have to put two or three coats on. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, it's if it's too thick, you're gonna see those brush strokes in there. That's it, really. Keep it thin. That's just amazing. And I want to bring up my absolute most favorite skin job, if that's the right word. Is, <laughs> that uh, just sounds bad. It does. Skin job. What was that? Was from a sci-fi movie? Probably was some. 
from so snuff flick that you and your Nazi friends <laughs> or watched porn <laughs> or back okay, in the yeah. North Side. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> this Wednesday, Wednesday Adams here. Yeah, no. I can't even explain how good that is. And I, again, people need to see it in a larger picture. Thank you. I, I'm dumbfounded. The shade, the shadows on that coming from the bottom are just immaculate. And it's like, I just, it looks like a painting. Like it looks not a painting on a kit, but just a straight illustration painting is so beautiful. Thank um, you. And I'm assuming you started dark to light on there as well. And you started with more purples and things, but man, Always. it's so good. So good. Yeah, dark delight. And and uh she has little moles on her. Those are accurate. I looked at Christina. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you <laughs> did. She has a uh, <laughs> she has those exact moles. Uh, I'm a big proponent. You have to have reference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the more reference the better. And, and there I did a couple things like for Mark Filmy and I asked him about, well, who who's the model or the actress or that you're basing this on or that you like. And, and I will pull up pictures of that actress and I have those nearby when I'm painting to, to look at just, just for reference, just to see. Because even on a sculpt, the sculpt could be perfect, but your painting can be off and it won't look like the person. Right, yes, I've noticed that before, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can paint what you think is just your basic, get the shadows right, get the, and it doesn't look like them. Because they have makeup on too, and they're they're changing, and and yeah, you can, you know, you can make a nose look thinner or wider by the way you shade. That's where the pastels come in great. Do you have a special pastel brand you like? I I have been using Rembrandt's Rembrandt, Rembrandt okay. for a long time, mainly because that's what I had from my college days. <laughs> <laughs> an ex, an expensive set of Rembrandt pastels. I've tried the pan pastels. I mean, I've used them, but I have such a variety of colors in the Rembrandt pastels, right. and uh, and they hold up. They when you spray them, they don't disappear. No, and, I've yeah, had I'll that, spend. Yeah. Like I said, I'll do <laughs> 10, 12, 15 layers of paint, and then I'll go in with the pastels just to punch it up a little bit, add a little more color, uh, rosy. Rosie up the cheeks, the the earlobes, darken them with a little bit more red uh, along the hairline. I mean, I'm going back to something we were talking about a little while ago. You're talking about painting and the and the color of the figure. It's not the same skin tone from top to bottom. If you look at a, a photograph of a nude, the, the I've never the done that. So I, darker. Yeah, I've never. The, the kneecap. Most of his hours looking at photographs of nude. So, <laughs> but if you really look at it, the colors, you know, the the forearms are going to be a little darker. Um, you know, there's there's lighter areas to the body, and there's warmer areas. And you can, if you don't want to airbrush it, and you can do it with pastels. You can brush in some stuff there. But yeah, oh yeah, I want. You're the only other person I've seen that's painted one of these that I have. We have some very similar collection pieces. And one of them is the white rabbit from, from, was oh. it, was it, uh, Bandersnatch or Jabberwocky? Yeah, it was Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's great to see someone else have done this and that Cheshire cat. Um, I wish they would have done more and kept going. I, I did too. That, that Jabberwocky, I was like, oh, I'll get it next time. And then it, they're gone. And I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> they were so at close. one. I think they were at one wonder fest. Yeah. I think, that and that's where it. I got, I got my rabbit. And, that and I got the Cheshire cat. <laughs> okay. And, um, and then got the Mad Hatter too. I yeah, think. I want to say the Cheshire Cat. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jim. If you remember, you might not remember. It was like a rust-colored resin almost. It was a weird or a brown. It was a weird color resin. Mine was, but I don't remember um, that. So anyway, they were out of it, and I, so I just paid for it there, and they sent it to me, and which they did. And uh, I love that piece, uh, that Cheshire Cat piece. I just, you know, I love that whole series. Yeah, uh, they did good stuff. I do want to ask you about your medals. Your oh, I was going to ask that too about the metallic. All right, then Scott, go ahead. Look at this. We're no, I, I just, yeah, what's your go-to metallics and, and what's your process? I mean, it, it's, wow. You have to, I tell people, you have to shade metallics just like you shade everything else. Mm -hmm. you, you can't just spray it silver. I mean, you know, so I have, a lot of times with metallics, I'll start with black. 
I mean, jewelry. Uh, I just, every, it's all black. And, then, and a lot of times it's that watercolor because I've, I've painted the, the figure like on that Deja Thora. So you, you have all this skin done and, and seal it really well. <laughs> you know, and then, and then I take the uh, black watercolor and go in and just get everything black, seal it. And then I'll go in with my base, base metallics. Now I, I used, I would use Jesse's if it was appropriate, but then I also have been using, um, uh, Little plastic. I mean, they're Michaels. Michaels, the little, little plastic with a flip top. Um, it's not just like Apple Barrel or something. Like, but it's not the Apple Barrel. Okay, but it, it's yeah, just it's just acrylic. I, my, okay. I've, I've used Tamiya's. I've used Liquitex. They have metallics. Um, I have some metallic watercolors that I've that I've used. But it's the same thing. I will paint the darkest shade of metallic. Like if I'm doing gold. I might paint it bronze first. I'll do the black and then I'll go, I'll put bronze down and then I might mix a little of the gold with the bronze. And then I mask Here's where the masking, (laughs) you know, I I will spend hours masking. I mean, it's silly putty all around all that. Now, you you know, like, is it 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 folk art? I don't mean to interrupt. Is it, is it folk art? Is that the, uh, I'm sorry. From Michael's folk art. No, no, it, it's so silly. It's just driving me crazy. But, <laughs> uh, but you know, so you can't do it over the whole figure because by the time you get everything masks masked, it's going to start drooping and peel, peeling uh-huh. away. So you do one section and um, black mask it, spray the copper, mix a little copper with the gold, and and again I spray them from the bottom up. You know, and then I do the midtones like horizontally, and then when I get the final gold, I'm coming down more from above. So it's hit, the paint is hitting it the way the light would, and it highlights it automatically for you. But yeah, there's a, and then I found I also use um, oils sometimes on gold. I'll use uh, burnt sienna oil and go in over top of the gold to do some shading if I if I don't like what's there. I've done that on a couple kits. Okay, cool. For, uh, for f- couple things for filming that Freya, Freya has a uh, little gnome, and there was some gold work in the base, and I used that. And then I also did uh, that Nefertiri, and there's a gold sarcophagus, I think, and some other things around. And and I may have gone in with a little bit of oil paint, just just to put a little more depth of color and a little shading on the metallic and the good thing is since it's oil the metallic that's underneath shows through it's not an opaque color it's just the glaze yeah the top. i'm still looking at pictures <laughs> oh man yeah just or, okay yeah i know i'm just i'm looking at the the freya that he just talked about i want to pull up i love those little guys that came with that kit oh that, yeah that, that yeah. was like one Mark, Mark likes the little scene. That, you know, there's got to be an animal in there. There's got to be a... <laughs> uh, the Halloween Nightmares kits from Jesse. Oh, uh, they're fun. Are they are really cool? They're but, fun. Any tips here for anyone that has them? That some of them you've done like. <laughs> I mean, fun. every one of those, I I did a lot of research on the monster. I mean, I found pictures of the old masks, so I had that to look at. I I use pictures of the monster from the moon. I like the way the monsters are more, they're comical, but they're more, you can get more real, the coloring on them and the kids. Yeah. Um, and I have been very deliberate in trying to keep a variety. Like I have a, I have a picture, it's in my own file of all the monsters on one page and all the kids on another page. And so when I'm doing a new one, I check the hair color. You know, I want a different <laughs> hair color different skin tone uh so I, i've tried to make them all different oh man they're beautiful how do you do uh <laughs> like i'm looking at the bog monster did you enjoy painting all that candy at the on the thing that's all the, the, <laughs> or do that, you that's just the at that part. point after about 20 minutes are you like oh i hate this thing that is okay. the hardest part <laughs> although i i i didn't mind the, the candy was all right, again, and, and I have 
on I did a couple articles for Jesse, a couple write-ups on how-tos. And on his site, there were a couple of the Halloween nightmare. There's one or two of them. And it shows the candy. It's it's all black. <laughs> or no, not 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 the candy. The candy I started all white because I wanted the colors to be intense. Mm -hmm. And I I just got my Liquitex colors out, little soft bodied acrylics and a little fine brush. And I started with purple and I put some purples here and there, and, you know, dark blues. And, and I went through until I got everything a base color. And then I went back and I highlighted every one of those little pieces of candy. I mean, <laughs> if you look close, there's, they're not just one blue. There's a highlight blue on top of it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and then once I get that done, then I put a watercolor, black watercolor wash over the whole thing and then wipe it. And the black gets down in all the little recesses and separates all the little pieces. And it makes those colors pop even more. Well, it's a, it's a, first of all, it's a great series. Uh, you know, of course, started originally by um, Adam, Adam Doherty. And, um, but I got to tell you, my, my favorite of all of them is the Dracula. I just thought the Dracula was amazing and um sorry i didn't buy it honestly um <laughs> because it was just but the collector's mentality sets in okay so it's like if you buy the dracula you gotta have them all and it's like you know and I, for years i've tried to get away from that jim and it's uh <laughs> it's hard but and i really like the whack-a-mole too the recent whack-a-mole one but the Dracula just is uh, is is crazy. But your work on all of them is fantastic. Thank you, actually. And so I want to ask you guys. I'm going to ask you guys both this because you're both art teachers. Uh, apparently, Jim's a better one. But uh, that's true. Uh, probably <laughs> at this point, probably true. Because you know, no one's trying to kill him yet. But uh, <laughs> I bet he worked in a nicer school. <laughs> but he, I bet he did too. But so when you guys look at a kid and, you know, like for me, I'm a classic monster superhero guy. OK, so I'm not the first thing I'm not looking at is the anatomy and the, you know, is everything right. But as art teachers that have gone through formal training, let's say, you know, where you took anatomy classes and you studied it and stuff like that. So when you look at a kid, is that what you guys do? You guys look for that? Or does it bug you when you see something that's, oh, the, that. the head's too small on that, or uh, the proportions are more that. It's more than they, it's like if you see something that's obviously not right, mm -hmm. not, that pops out more than looking for an, the anatomy. Okay. All right. So yeah. I agree. <laughs> and once you notice it, you, you can never it. unnotice it. And I'm a big s symmetry person, and it's the reason why I, I probably don't have any tattoos. Because if I ever noticed that that tattoo was off center on my arm or something, I would cut my arm off because I would look at it the rest of my life. Like I just, I can notice when something's off by like a little bit, balance, and it drives me mm -hmm. nuts. And it's the same thing if someone in a kid, if their arm is too long, I can notice that right away, or like a head is too small, and I'm like, oh, it doesn't work. That's I'm never buying that. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um, I'm just curious because it's certain things will stand out to me sometimes with a kid. Um, one one that comes to mind, and that's a. Uh oh, here we go. Who are, gonna Who are we going to bash? Who are we going to bash? Let's go. But uh, <laughs> no, because I have the kid and I love the kid. Is um, the Humphrey Bogart the uh, Hollywood classic? I think it was the first one that John Tucky did that Jaeger sculpted. And to this day, I say it's too short. It, it's the legs needed to be longer. It is. And still bugs me to this day. But the likeness was so good. It's like, I don't care. I'm buying it. But so, you know, like you guys, I'm so picky on certain things. And I won't buy what I consider a mediocre King Kong kit because I'm, I, I'm such a King Kong nut. It better look like King Kong or I'm not touching it. And I you know, it, so it's, you know, but a true collector would just want every King Kong kid, Scott. What's right. And I, and I don't do that. And people don't understand that about me, but, no. 
<laughs> and and you just said about symmetry, Jason. The the bad thing about King Kong when I did my own King Kong kit is when when Matt first sculpted it and he showed it to me, I was like, oh, that's great, man. That that looks perfect. And then he sends me pictures two hours later, and he made it symmetrical. And I said to him, what did you do to it? And he goes, what do you mean? I go, it's wrong. It, what did you do? Well, I just cleaned it up. And he and him and I had a huge fight about it. And I said, <laughs> go look at the pictures you sent me earlier and look at the pictures you sent me now. And so when he did, then he calls me back and says, all right, I fixed it. He sent me pictures. It was right. Because that particular model was not symmetrical. Okay. If you look at pictures, one nostril's a little bigger yeah. or, or a little different but, shape. So you have to be careful, you know, with the sy- symmetry. And, and the truth uh, is, we're we're not perfectly symmetrical. We, I mean, yes, we we're we're symmetrical, but if you took a mirror image and looked at, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it's we're not the same. And I've noticed that a lot in when I'm browsing for 3D print files. Sculptors nowadays can just sculpt one side of something. And it automatically does the other side. So when people are sculpting a face, you can tell it's perfectly symmetrical on both sides and it looks wrong. Like it, it, you have to go in as one of those sculptor guys and unsymmetricalize the other side, whatever the, it, to make it look right. Cause otherwise it looks not natural. It looks wrong. I saw a study where they did, and some of the top models and people we really, they have a more symmetrical features yeah. than the average person. And yeah. that appeals to us. But uh, I yeah. think I was watching maybe the same. It was, uh, they did a study on different actresses' faces. And who the one that came up the most beautiful was, oh, what's her name? The girl that was just in Aquaman and f- divorcing Johnny Depp. Oh, uh, Amber- crap. Amber Heard. Amber Heard. She came up with one of the most symmetrical, like perfect faces. It's one of them. It's mm-hmm. odd, but she's going to poop in your bed. So you don't want that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you see where this goes downhill, Jim. I try to keep it above board <laughs> and, and he brings well, for it For once, down. I brought us down. Uh, for once, you bring us down. I have a picture here of the dragon girl from uh, Sam Greenwell. And the Fano, the Fawn Alfano from Three Kings, I think was did it originally. Um, two of my favorite pieces. Sam Greenwell has always been one of my favorite sculptors in Garage Kit Land. Do you have any like sculptors other than Roberto that we talked about? Anyone else that you kind of go towards or does things consistently like, that you like? I like I like Sam. I finally got yeah that Dragon Girl was mine. It was like I finally got, you know, mine to do. And he's changed that over the years. He's made variations of it. I mean, one Dragon Girl from 15 years ago is not the same kit. There's alteration stuff. Um, No, I mean, I have a, I guess it is the sculpt that catches you right away. Because Mark Van Tyne's. Uh, Hunchback and Phantom, those were like two that when I saw them, I had to have. <laughs> yeah, I, I, have, I haven't painted them yet, but I have. <laughs> but you got them. <laughs> and to do them, they, they were great. Um, yeah, uh, I felt that way with Mark's um, Pretorius. Remember when he? Oh when yeah, he that thing. I just looked at that and said, "Wow!" And first of all, no one had really ever sculpted that character. You know, to that extent, and just I remember looking at that, going, "Holy crap, that thing is beautiful." What's and... what I hate to I hate to admit, I'm I'm not good with names. Okay, now here I am, a teacher, thirty nine years. I was lousy with names. I had a seating chart, <laughs> and it's a good thing I had a seating chart, <laughs> dude. I'm and right there with you, and I can explain it. It's you because learned- you. You learn the names of the of the troublemakers real quick. <laughs> you learn their names right away. And unfortunately, the the, the average kids or the, the kids who just come in and plug on the names didn't. So it's a good thing I had a seating chart, and I would force myself <laughs> to go around and talk to the kids and, and use say their names to sort of get in. But see, and then another thing with names. I remember going to Wonderfest in the early years and I was looking forward to meeting people, but everybody has their name tags. Well, the people that I wanted to meet, 
they don't put their name on their name tags. <laughs> a lot, uh, a lot of the name people don't. They don't. They don't have their names on there. They got. Nice just, to say, I'm guilty of that. I never. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you do that. That's because he's afraid people are gonna find him that have been looking yeah. for him. <laughs> I'm gonna fight well, the my other way out of there. I only knew them by their screen name or yeah. their avatar name, and it's like, okay, but how do I find this person? You yeah, know, so. I, I have but an explanation so for that. I I think, and you're you taught for far longer than I have at this point. Is you get? I think there's a certain part of your brain that is like the name part of your brain, and it fills up at a certain at a point. <laughs> and once all those names are filled up, you cannot remember a name for the rest of your life. I'm the exact same way. I see kids. I'm like, oh yeah, you come over here. And I don't, and you're right. It's the bad kids you remember. And when I see them out in public, I, I try to remember names. Can you do third grade math? Can you do third grade math? That's what I want to know. Okay. (laughs) Cause he can't. All right. He's a mess. I shared an art, my art room. I shared it with a woman and and we shared the room at the same time. It was a huge room and she had a class on one side of the room and I was teaching a class on the other side of the room simultaneously in the room at the same time. Oh she had her kids over there and I had mine kids over there. I'd be on the 2D side, she'd be on the 3D side. And like, she, by the end of the first week, second week at the list, she knew every kid's name. I mean, she just had this name and she could, she could look, she knew them, she'd name them, she'd call them out. I could never do that. <laughs> same, same way. That is that is just a riot. Uh, oh, I, yeah. And so I'm the same way when it comes to sculptors and and artists. Even I mean, I see the work and I like it, and I, you know, I I see who did it. And can you? I, I'm like I can do it, and I know Scott can do it. Is you can I can pick out a Jim Capone paint job in seconds. I could pick out a Saul. I could pick out a Steve. Like, are you the same way? You can kind of see yeah, who would. Certain people have a. A, a style. style. Yeah. 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 Even if it's not like like Jeff, obviously, Jeff Camp is very obvious and very, it's yeah. so uniquely different. Yes. Mm-hmm. But even when it comes to paint, like Rick can too, uh, there's certain things that Rick yeah. does. Yep. Salt has his way. And, and Je- well, and, and there's even their genre. You know, Joe is the go to guy for your predators. And- yep. <laughs> That's for sure. One of the cool things on your website, if people, and I have them here, but I'm not going to pull them all up is you have some little instructional pictures. And one of them is something that one of our listeners, Bill Wilson, has been asking for for a very long time, is a how to paint eyes video. So Bill, here is a how to paint eyes chart. But is there any tips to painting eyes? Because we've had some other people come on and give theirs. Are Is yours just straightforward, follow these steps and you're good? Or is there a I hate, secret? I hate painting eyes. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I will. Because I will spend hours. I, I'm not very. I'm not very good at it. I mean, uh, I, I follow the steps pretty much on those charts. I did a demo at Wonderfest one year on, on painting eyes, and I used the, I used that big uh, Nosferatu, the, uh, the one I just recently painted. I used, uh-huh. even though it was a large scale, I painted it as if it were though as if it were small, because they come up with that camera, and, and your paint needs little tiny eyes and he's trying to get in close for people saying they're not going to see this so i did it large scale yeah you know i'm painting this the way i would on a very small and my approach is i i base paint the sclera the, the white of the eye then i paint a lighter highlight just like the steps um seal it i use watercolors for setting the the hardest part for me is getting the irises set the getting them the right both yeah. the same size and looking in the same direction. Scott has that problem. Well, it, if you were doing a kid of me, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah, I got that <laughs> and that's why I do it with watercolor so I can keep taking it off and try. I mean, once I get the whites done, I, I seal it. I even put a gloss coat, like to me, a clear, I put a gloss down because I'm going to be wiping it so many times. I want to make sure it's a, a good base. Mm-hmm. But what I tend to do to check is I hold the figure out in front of me. I hold one hand up so I can only see one eye and I position it so that eye is looking at me. So that so that eye is looking at me. And then I slide my hand over and if that other eye isn't looking at me, it's like, okay, it's looking over my shoulder. I like that. I've never tried that's a good idea. That's that's what I I mean. Okay, look at look at look at one. Okay, hold it so it's looking at me. 
and then shift this over. And is that, I no, it's not looking at me. It's looking down or it's looking up or, you know, yeah. um, I mean, I used to do things like hold it in a mirror. Sometimes turning it upside down helps. I've had, yes, I agree. Uh, yeah. But and definitely me, the, it's one thing I think that as an art teacher, you'll know this is to step back and look at things from far away. Just the whole thing. So you, instead of just being up here all the time, look even the just getting thing. away from it for the yeah. night, <laughs> yes. you know, it's good to at a certain point, just put it down yeah, walk away, come back the next day. And you, you, when you're fresh, you suddenly see something that you didn't notice before. Uh, what does your family think of you in all of this? Or are they like, <laughs> Oh, there's, there's crazy dad. And my dad loved it. He, you know, he, he used to like, he, he always looked forward. I take a, take the latest issue of the magazine in for him to see. And, oh, know. cool. Yeah. So I have, I'm, uh, I'm looking at your collection here. And, and so I'm going to ask you another question because I'm just loaded with them. For one, well, other than those Auroras, I don't notice too many styrene kits. Is, uh, is styrene a, no, um, not a preferred uh, Jim mili Capone medium. One. I haven't found. I didn't notice any styrene that I I wanted to get. I have uh, I have Beach Bunny catching waves. Remember those old? Yeah. Weird oh yeah, I've got that one. Yeah, I've got that one. Yeah. I, I actually started work on that a little while ago. Beach Bunny. Um, no, I mean I did styrene, obviously, mm -hmm. and but. I don't, I don't look for any, it, like it has to be resin. I mean, I've done some vinyl kits. I never, they didn't bother me. I didn't mind vinyl. I know some people don't care for it, but. Uh, oh, I don't know why vinyl. I, I think vinyl's really easy. Um, how do you like building kits when you get a kit? I mean, is that like your, do you have a least favorite part of doing a kit? And is building that as far as. When you have, especially you do so many of these girl kits, and I got to believe to seam those <laughs> so perfectly that you can't see it is got to be a pain in the ass. It it's just, it, I, I just attribute it to as part of the process. You know, you just got to go in and scrape, go through scrape. What, what I hate about seam lines is once, when you have a section painted. <laughs> Oh, and, and then you pick you it up. You think you're yeah. done, and you see, oh my gosh, there's a little bit of a hint of a seam going through there, and you have to get rid of that. But uh, yeah, I don't mind the building. Um, now, some some kits are a lot more mat meticulous than other. I mean, one of the more harder ones I done. I just did Oceana. It's one of Jesse's denizens of Zoe. It's the woman. It's the octa squid girl. She's like half squid. Her bottom half is. Oh squid. yeah. And uh, that one, that was involved because you had to get these tentacles on, and they're weaving through the water that's coming up around her, and I it didn't work. It for, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't get it to go together. <laughs> I could, and I, I think what happened was, in the, the sculptor just did it. I know a couple people, um, Gabe worked on it with, I'm trying to remember now, Sam? I can't remember the names now, but they, I think in casting, they cut some things and put some things together that made it difficult to assemble it the way they originally intended. Mm -hmm. I ended up writing up how I did it so Jesse could post that on his page because I found I had to cut tentacle ends off and I used magnets so you can feed it in one side and then put the tip, the tip of the tentacle back because it goes through the water. And, you know, so the magnet there pulls the two pieces in. And I see exactly was, what you're talking about. I'm looking at it now. Oh, yeah. yeah I am was, too. I am too. He was challenging. Um, and probably the part that drove me, she has all this bead work, all this little tiny bead work. And I hated that. It was driving me crazy. Yeah. The, the, the little meticulous beadwork. Um, there's a lot of 3D printing now. I've, you know, the 3D print. And the, I was and just going to ask you about that, how you felt about that. And, and the digital the digital sculpts. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I've noticed that I wish they would change or think about, when a guy used to sculpt it by hand, I mean, the details were only as fine as they could do by hand. <laughs> you know? And they they had to 
that they were they were more raised that they were more they were easier to paint mm -hmm. some of the detailing on these digital sculpts is so fine and so so thin and it it barely raises above the surface of the kit that is a nightmare to paint <laughs> i even said the, I even Jim, told Jesse, it's a superman logo okay it's a superman logo they feel the need to bring it off the chest okay it's like my pet peeve of, of all the you know it doesn't have to be a quarter of an inch off his chest but... <laughs> thank you okay i'm okay but, if it's raised a little okay but, but uh I mean, there's some little swirling, even on the Oceana, there's some little swirling designs here and there. And boy, they are so close to the surface. Your your old tricks, like just a quick dry brush, it, no, it, it doesn't work because it's so close to the surface. It's, and I know, that's the only thing I've I have come a, across. a Venom kit and the eyes are like that. They're just barely raised. So, and they're not, there's not even a cutout line around them. You have to kind of almost fake it in some of the spots of what you're going to have to do. Right. I totally get what you're saying. Well, and, and the problem Jim for this is most of these guys digitally sculpting either aren't printing. Okay. Or if they are printing, they're not painting the damn thing. All right. Or they would do it different. And I, I have the same problem with superhero kits. I used to, well, I still have quite a collection of the old Bowen stuff. Okay. And I like the Bowen stuff because it was simple like it was in the comics, and I've covered this here before. But when you get into some of these sites now where they're sculpting these superheroes and the textures that they're putting on the costumes and stuff like that, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. But yeah, at some point it's too much. It, it's it, So I, I'm right there with you. I get it. They do it because they can do it. It can do it. And, <laughs> and I understand creatively for them that's it's probably yeah. great, but for somebody who's going to try, try and paint it, like really challenging. <laughs> well, and we run into it with, with printing. They don't realize the printer is only this big, you know, whatever you've got. And so they're making these huge pieces and they like don't want to cut them. Or, or you run into recently, and I, I don't care, I'll say their name, Wicked did this Dracula, this Lugosi Dracula. And you can print the cape as one piece or you can print it in five pieces. But because of the texture you have on it, who the hell wants to print a five piece one? Because it's, you know, it's going to be a seeming nightmare. And if you, so if you print the whole thing, he's got his arm out, you know, hold on, he's got his arm out. So the cape drapes over the inside of his arm, like the Janus kit, the old Janus kit. So we had a friend of ours that did print this, but now when he goes to put the arm on, it don't, you can't get it in the cape. <laughs> okay and and when you get a hold of these guys at wicked they said well just kind of force it out well if you've dealt with 3d resin before you know there's no there's not a lot of give before you're going to get a snap okay so it's like he's got a lot of these guys again they don't print so they don't know and i would say the same thing with the painting they don't paint them so they don't get it okay they don't get it and then i did i did a couple early 3d prints and you could really see the the strap lines little the little layers of it you know uh, that they're not so noticeable anymore i mean you, you still have to do some sanding light sanding i mean mm -hmm. some places it's just too hard i'm not going to go in there and try and get all those little and, and you hope uh, your primer and your paint fills it in a little bit too which is there anything else you want to talk about i don't know i mean no. okay i can tell you you know i i'm not much of a metal oh, collector or anything like that <laughs> I, I i did my shows got my gold and satisfied that's what i did well and that's what a lot of guys did like jason and a lot of guys and i, and I don't I, I mean more power to the guys that want to enter every year and gold up or whatever and i get the kick of probably doing it the first time i, I like i would know but it's I, I would have to say if I got a gold, I'd probably stop. I'd be like, "Yeah, okay, I'm good. That's cool." You know, I was I was slow. I mean, I started. I entered my first contest like I could like hear two thousand or so. There was a phantom figure, that phantom figure model show. It was in Allentown. I remember that. Yeah, I, I remember, remember that too. Yeah, Bob was Bob Maxwell involved with that. Was it? Yes. Bob? Okay. All right. I think they only they only did one or two. Mm -hmm. I think they did. 
And that was, I think I was the first show that I actually entered anything in. And I entered my, my Janus hunchback that mounted on a wall and I made a special stand for it so I could put it on the table. And I got a silver and Jeff Yeager was there. And yeah, he, he gave, he was handing out the award. So I got a silver there. I, I entered Chiller about that same time. I did a couple, mm-hmm. I, I, I would go to one show just to see. Like the first time I went to Wonder Fest, I just wanted to see what it was about. I had heard about it. I, I was getting flyers. I don't know how I got on the mailing list, but I was getting, <laughs> I was getting a little flyer for Wonder Fest, a little yeah. booklet, because back then they actually offered the classes. I think it was it was part of their thing. Yeah, yeah they did a lot they more classes. Some, they yep. had Dave Fisher did a few classes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I always wanted to do that. And the year I was going to do it, they didn't do them anymore. But I think 2000 was the first year I went down just to check it out, just to see because I didn't I didn't want to bring stuff down and be embarrassed. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, I went down and saw the first, my first show, and I thought, okay, all right, this this is something to shoot for. And I didn't go the next year. I think it was like 2002 I went down and entered for the first time. I got a silver and a, a bronze and a couple merits. It's like, okay, I, I want to I want to get a gold. And I didn't go every year. So I skipped and it was like 2004. And I, I took my the Guardian of Gotham. It was a Batman. And uh, it was a Batman and I added some background to it. And again, I used HO, some train pieces, some. I remember some, this piece. I, I keep going. I remember I added, added that. And, and I was fortunate enough. I got a gold for that. And I also got the best in the category, best comic thing that year. So I thought, that's great. Okay. I can do it. And I thought, well, let's, I wanted to see if it was a fluke. <laughs> so I entered the show again the next time and i it was a superhero it was a supergirl girl of steel it was jaren studios it was a large figure supergirl in her and and i i got my second goal with that and i said okay that's good um, <laughs> i'm satisfied yeah. plus and i and i noticed the s is raised a little bit more on her chest than it should be too so i'm just <laughs> and then and apparently they he later on he took it off because of copywriters he got it they they had to take the s off and they made it separate or something uh, oh wow yeah. and then cool. and then i started doing some writing for people and they told us you know if you're a writer you don't you don't enter the show <laughs> i so, yeah I, I, you know i could ask jim a quick question here because you know i'm going through this gallery of been, that's one of the reasons why i stayed out of the contest for a very long time too. and um you know you've got this hulk here that you did with the mailbox Oh, oh, Scott, are you going to ask what I was going to ask? And, I, you know, I noticed the gums are pink. I noticed and, the gums uh, are painted wrong. <laughs> no. <they're... laughs> Let me get to the picture. Hang on. See, see, Jim, now, him and I go back and forth about this oh, all the time. Oh, let me get there. All right, I got it. I got it. Okay, go okay. ahead. <laughs> all right. And, 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 and he says the gums should be green, and I say the gums should be pink. In his mouth. And, uh, yeah. Because Jim yep. Capone is a... Uh, better known painter than you i'm gonna say jim's right okay <laughs> now that's a kid i i i was thrilled to paint that one i thought he was a different looking hulk i, I kind of like the face mm-hmm. it, you know it, uh, i i really liked it so when that's the cool thing okay. about hulk kits is everyone finds a way to kind of make them all look different even their faces look different in a lot of them whereas like superman it almost always just looks like the same hulk there's a lot of variation but Scott and I have had when, this argument for when some hack tells you that you painted the gums wrong. The gums okay. should never be pink on a on a Hulk kit ever. <laughs> what about the palms of his hands? No pink at all anywhere. Yeah, I, see, I, and I'm I, looking I, at that. I can see like the bottom of his toes. You got a little. Uh, you've got the flesh mixed in there. And I know okay. it is a personal choice and a personal preference. <laughs> but this I, uh, is a fight that Scott and I have had. You're personally wrong. You're okay. person. This has nothing to do with Jim and how he painted it. This is an argument uh, between bullshit. the two of us. And he's trying to push us over. The- <laughs> this sounds like an IPMS. Yeah, it is. It totally is. This it is, is a, we're rivet counters. This when is, it comes, yes. I'm a rivet counter when it comes to this. Oh yeah. Those are not that color in the field. You <laughs> so yeah. Um, I'm a little more liberal with color. I mean, I try to stick if it's obvious, but I, I, I I'll fudge color. I, I like the, I love color. I like what, what I like about your, especially your comic book 
character work. I'm looking at that Joker bus now, which I have. And um Oh, I don't think I have a picture of that one. Very bright and very colorful. It's right down from the Hulk, like too, I think. Yeah, Jim's but I, I don't have it. Well then too bad. Then stay yeah. out of the conversation. But <laughs> um, the one with the gun. The, the, the one with the gun going bang. bang yeah. And he's holding the flower. And I just look at that and I go, if ever a paint job would have sold me on a kit, this would have done it because it's it's like again, right out of the comics. And yet it's shaded and it's it, wow. I, I Jim, all I can say is wow. That thing's beautiful. So it, it's. I pulled these, and they're they're they couldn't be more different. And I put them next to each other for a reason, because your blending on both of them is immaculate, and it's the Grinch, and the the Fire Girl from Jesse. I don't know the name where she's coming out of the lava. Oh boy! Oh, uh, Hakira. I there think you is go. The- and you have the blends like just in her dress is is very beautiful, and just. The Grinches, where it goes from where the light is hitting his nose to the darker greens. I think it is a, if people need to understand like light and how to blend something really well, look at this Grinch picture because it, it's a perfect example of changing that green from light to dark. And it just, it pops so well. Um, and then in the lava, the dragon coming out of the lava, is it, how did you do that? That was, well, they were all transparent resin. So again, I I used, I think I used the Tamiya clears on okay. it, like transparent red and transparent yellow and orange. I I think I used that on those, um, with with an over with an over thing of some of Jesse's color to keep it legal. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so but then I I for the the dragon I wanted you to see the dragon head right. a little, better, and I used some. Some slightly more opaque That's what colors. I thought. Okay, cool. Just a little bit, and just kind of highlighted with some opaque, just to so that popped out a little more. Yeah, very cool. That's yeah. All right, I have one thing to ask Jim. One more thing I got to ask Jim. All right, one more. Jason <laughs> doesn't know about this at all. Oh, but I've seen it firsthand, so I'm I'm amazed. So I've been with help Jesse tear down, and been there when Jesse's tearing down, and Jesse pulls out these boxes that he puts his built-ups in that Jim have, like Jim's laughing, that Jim has fabricated. Okay? And it's amazing. It, it's like an engineering feat. We we could have Jim on just talking how he boxes a kit because <laughs> it flaps open and, and every spot's got a spot. <laughs> It's like, I, I wish I had an example of it. Maybe I could get Jesse to send us a picture of one. But it, it's just Jim, does everybody that gets a Capone kit, is that how they all get shipped? Or is that yeah. just I, I special Jesse it. treatment? Okay. It's it's him for just for practical reason because I have to take them down to Wonderfest. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I do everything here, I deliver them at Wonderfest, and then he drives them home. So I I made the boxes so they could be packed in and transported without any problem. Without, I mean, there's not a lot of peanuts or anything. They just fit in their little spaces, and yeah. Well, it's all it's all foam, right? Isn't it all cut out foam? Uh, it's or, corrugated or... cardboard, and I built the original box, and then I start building little smaller cubby areas, oh, it, and then I use some <laughs> some foam for the leg to rest in, and the arm, the, the head to rest in, and support. Jason, it. it's amazing. Uh, if you it's, were to I got to see this. It, it's amazing. It, it sounds it, like it, good retirement projects. Is <laughs> It, it's, he has said it a couple times. He said, "You should do a demo on this." It's like well, it, thank a you, demo on on how to box not very packing. Too hard. All right, we're gonna have to leave it there. I want anything else you want to for people that are you painting commissions still, or are you just kind of? I'm gone? really winding down. Okay, I mean, if there's a unique one that really really catches my eye. I might All right, do it. so if someone wants to get wants to get a hold of you to you know if they have a great unique kit they want painted. <laughs> that they think they could tease you with, with what's the best way to get a hold of you? Email. I mean, I, I mean, and my Facebook page that, I mean, you can message me through that. But, okay. Yeah. We'll get all that information down below to get a hold of Jim. It's uh, on my website and it's on my Facebook page. Too. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. This has oh, been thank awesome. Thank you. I was-
Yeah, this has been awesome. Good getting to know you a little bit finally. Yeah. And uh next next time we'll we'll actually chat. But one <laughs> yes, yeah. for well, sure. I tell you what, we get rid of the dead weight, we can have a great conversation. Okay, Jim. <laughs> Wait, who's I'm, the dead weight? Me or you are the dead weight. Uh, Look at that head for crying out loud. What? Okay. <laughs> but no, Jim, I, I really appreciate it. One of the nicest Paul Gill's gonna kill me for this. One of the nicest guys in the hobby. One of the humblest guys in the hobby, and probably one of the, if not the best garage kit painter out there, in my opinion. Oh, so well. it, it's thank you. you know, and um, and and again, another thing is for those of you, and again, the reason you don't, you know, it's not Jim Capone everywhere is because I don't think Jim's got that ego that you know a lot of guys have. And man, more power to you, Jim, because just. Fly under that radar like me. And <laughs> <You're> Jason. <laughs> Look at Jason, huh? What? <laughs> I'm just waiting for the lightning to take out all the equipment. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, I want to thank you for the quick response and uh oh, coming on. I, I was and, thrilled. Uh, I was glad to come on. Thank you. Yeah. Sharing with us and uh and I, I'm willing to share i have no problem people people email me and ask me questions i don't mind at all i'll i'll send them pictures i yeah share i'm not i don't feel like i need to keep secrets that's awesome because we were just talking to our friend not to keep it going we're talking to jamie Sai, and we have this a lot of these new guys that are painters of like prints they have all of their paint techniques tucked behind their patreon paywall and if so if you message one of these guys like oh how do you paint that they're like oh it's on my patreon join up Instead of just, yeah. oh, yeah, I use these colors. Here's what you do. It's not it's mm -hmm. not as free uh, free will sharing anymore. And it's kind of, it sucks. So it's great to see that you have those charts up there and you're willing to share. So any questions for paint, I, you know, send you an email. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm cool. retired. <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> real, real quick, we were on we were on vacation over the summer. I spent a week at the beach and we came home and I'm sitting in the living room and I said, I have to. I have to transition from the beach. And my wife looked at me and said, to what? You're retired. <laughs> hey, I, I was retired for 18 months, Jim, and I'm only doing part-time now, but I would tell everyone every day is Saturday. What's tomorrow? Saturday. What's yesterday? <laughs> every day is Saturday. So uh, if you don't go on vacations anymore. You go on yeah. trips. Yeah. Because and then do you find, and I know Jason's in a hurry to get up, but no, no. one wants to hear what we got to say anyway. Do you find it? Do you look at your life now and say, "How did I ever have time to do oh. what I do now while I was working and still work? How did I have time to do everything?" That but I have found is time goes much more faster now that I'm retired. I, I, can't I can see that. How, yeah, I can see that. How fast it goes by. I mean, teaching. I remember the end of the of Monday afternoon, thinking, "God, it's only Monday." I mean, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> will this week never end <laughs> as you pull the gun now, out of your mouth oh my god <laughs> <laughs> now the, the time just flies by now it's like it's friday again yeah it's yeah it was harder i mean it was a real effort to get things done i i had a after school and work after dinner you had a i had to go downstairs and start work right away because if i sat down to watch the news or something that's it the evening's lost so yeah you had to had to go down and get busy and put in your couple hours yeah my wife will tell you, I still go down in every day and paint something. I mean, it, sometimes I'll only paint for a half an hour, an hour, but it's mm -hmm. just about every day I'm doing something. But I think that is great advice. I think everybody, and I need to take it more. Mine's more building. I'll at least build for a half hour of something. But if everyone could at least just put a half hour into their hobby a day, even at, like just throw like one little coat of paint on. It keeps you fresh and it keeps you in the mode because once you get away from it, Scott, it's hard to get back into it and start. Well, painting see, that's it why away. I'm just staying away. <laughs> I'm, I'm just staying away. All right, Jim. I'm thank you. Jim teaches a class and I'm signing up. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you teach a class, Wonderfuss. Do it. Hey, yeah. that'd be cool. All right, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you soon. Yeah, and we're gonna have you back and we'll just do a regular chat one day. And that'd be great. I stuff. love it. Cool. Love All, it. Right. All right. All right. Thanks, man. All right, Scott. That was Jim. That was, that was Jim. a great interview. Great guy. Yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of stuff on his website, too. Uh, Jason, you pulled a lot of photos up here, too. I did. But, um... I did. And I was, it was kind of hard to keep up and kind of move around. So, everyone, please head over to jimcapone.com. 
you can see all of that stuff there and it, it'll it, my little pictures here aren't going to do it justice so please hurry up because he's 71 so there's no telling how long they're going to last okay you know uh, uh, Jim's a 71 years young that's for sure but um it's just one of us just you know just normal dude you're, yeah painter guy and just yeah all right voicemails emails and corrections all right first up we have a uh correction which never happens on the show because we get everything right 100 percent of the time we had a voicemail last episode that we thought was Brent. What? What's wrong? Two corrections. Two corrections in one episode? Mm-hmm. Unheard of. Well, let me do mine first. Okay. Uh, this is from Mike Zizek. Uh, sorry, Jason, I owe you an apology. I forgot to say my name on the voicemail from the last episode. It wasn't Brent from the figure model garage. It was Mike Zizek. And that was my ears and Scott's ears that thought it was Brent. So weird. And I have more emails from Mike, but go ahead with your other correction. How do you spell voicemails? I don't know. It's a typo or type typo. No one else can see that. So correction. It's a correction. Oh, you can't see it. (laughs) No, it's not on the screen. I forgot an E. Just typing. It's a typo. All right. What's a so Scott's name? correction is to correct me to make fun of my typing. <laughs> I can never win around here. You type like you talk. <laughs> I do. I do. Ooh, this is a good guest. Um, so Mike Zizek has some more of this email, and I want to go through this. So real quick, he has a guest for the Ghost of Tucky. Okay. Dan Garden. His name has not entered the picture until this very moment. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I think I still, I think I know who it is and I'm getting, I'm going to corner this person one of these days, but ghost, we have no voicemail. So I don't, I, I, you know, who knows? All right. So here's the rest of this one. And there's a lot to it. Uh, so I was thinking, this is again from Mike Zizek. So I was thinking Dan about gardens at home right now going, why the hell do I got to be the voice? <laughs> He's like, son of a bitch. Larry. For the record, I don't think it's Dan. But nah, anyway. I don't think so either, but you never know. No, I don't. I don't know. So I was thinking about a few things while listening to some podcasts again while at work. Picking up golf balls on the driver range allows me to do that. Anyway, here are a few things in no particular order. Any update on the Edgar kits from Dan Garden from Sci-Fi Model and things? Did he sell out? I'm wondering. We got to get a like, confirmation if we ever sold out of his kits that he was trying to sell out of. And then he mentioned something that Scott mentioned on this show that both of us forgot about, about something Scott would do for people that did something. And I'm going to leave it a secret because they all, this is the only person to bring it up. So oh, we I... will get this person what we owe him. And if anyone else ever remembers the thing that Scott said. We will take care of you. Yeah, from this point on, the the, the offer is null and void. <laughs> yeah. So we'll leave it at that. Mike, I need your uh, size. <laughs> All right. The spreadsheet above might be a way to help people with Grail kits and their search. Maybe put it on the show notes so people can download the link and access it for future reference and add any updates. So I'm going to put a link in the show notes to, and I think this is hosted will be hosted over on Mike's uh, Gmail account. It is a list where you can put in grail kits that you're looking for. So if you're looking for it, you put it in there. And if someone has it, they can see it on the sheet, get your contact info if they're willing to sell it to you. It's a little grail list that'll keep going. So it's a Google Doc that'll just keep running. And I'll have that in the comments below. I made it so everyone can edit and access it with the link. If it needs to be tweaked, feel free to do it or let me know and he can edit it. Uh, or if this is a shitty idea, you have my permission to ignore it. I think it's a good idea. So we're going to put it up there. I'll also put it on a link on Discord for people that are trying to find it. Uh, after getting a few busts from Mark Worthing, I was blown away by the molding and casting. Best cast ever, remember? Yeah. I wonder if he would be able to film a segment for, for the show where he discusses the design concept, sculpt, acquisition, molding, casting, and packaging. This could be a part two to Jesse Garcia's presentation. I may have suggested something like this earlier, but I cannot remember now. 
I would also <laughs> it would also help to explain why kits co kits cost what they do by comparison to a styrene kit, which are produced by the thousands. Plus, it would be cool as shit to see the process. I had mentioned it to him, and he was open to it if it could be worked out. Sorry for the lengthy email. I'll get it. Uh, get a roll. I get on a roll sometimes. Have a great Thanksgiving. Take time to rest and recharge the batteries for the pre-Christmas push. Aren't, aren't we still waiting on another video from Mark Worthling? We're waiting on a video from you. What's the other video we're waiting on from Mark Worthling? You know what? Don't turn this on me. I don't know. I think we're supposed to get interviews or something somewhere. Oh, uh, okay. But no, I think that's a good idea. And it would be a good, like, sequel interview. Like, the Worthing, casting process. Worthing would be nothing if it wasn't for Or you know what? We can maybe we'll have you do a casting process video. And I'll come over there and film it. Well, I, I do actually have some... Um, do you have something to cast? I do have some stuff I have to mold, too. So Well, let's... It, you know what? We'll do that. We'll do that. They won't be as good as Worthing's castings, but we'll... We have an email from Tim Fortuna. <laughs> you know, I was casting when Worthing had long hair. Did you see the pictures of him? No, no, I didn't. Page? I'm going to have to oh, go, you find gotta go to his Facebook right. page and pull that up. All right. From Tim Fortuna. I just want to go on the record that I am not leaving you messages as the Joker. My impressions suck and they all sound like shitty song Sean Connery. The person alluding to check out my plumbing knows I am a plumber, which isn't a secret. So I'm guessing it's someone from the clubhouse. Has anyone ever heard Spike's voice? I'm starting to think heavy metal Spike is an AI simulation and the start of the AI revolution against humanity. Does the MCTV phone number have call display? Might get an area code from it. Thank you, gents, for everything you do. Tim and Jason, watch Terrified. I know you haven't yet. It's on Shudder. And his second movie where Evil Lurks just came out. I will check those out. Uh... It does not show their phone number. It is caller blocked. Like I think you can go and block your ID call thing on there. So all of those have the uh, number blocked. So we don't know where they're coming from. I it could be coming from heaven or hell, depending on where 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 we're at. This last email is from Chuck Amoka, and I, it is a T-shirt available over at Hot Topic. Scott, I thought you might like it. And I'd rather have one of uh, Terry Gar going you know, nice knockers, but uh, <laughs> you should make that shirt. You should make that shirt. It's um, I do like the shirt. The problem is, in case everyone hasn't noticed, I don't do black shirts that often. Why don't you do black shirts? You know, I'll tell you why. I used to do black shirts all the time, all through high school. I had black shirts, black Hegwish Records T-shirts with a. Band I wish I had a Hegwish Records shirt. They, there's a place you can get one. I'll, I'll talk to you okay. offline about this, but there's a place. Black t-shirts, once they wear in and they get soft, are awesome. But for some reason, when you first get a new black t-shirt, I don't like the way they feel until they wear in. And okay. then once they wear in, they're fine. So I do have some black shirts that I I'm, okay. I should probably wear. Um, Dan Cherney made me a really nice airbrush King Kong shirt that I've yet to wear. And that's black. Um, Joe Bello uh, sent me a Jersey Fest black T-shirt. So, um, what? I'm sorry. Did you do Joe Bello a favor? Because I did. Okay. So I'm just sorry. Did you? Okay. Uh, no. Did you? Okay. All right. You talked to Joe Bello on. Private message from time to time? No. Okay. I do. So stop with your... You got birthday gifts from uh, Horvath. Did I say anything? Yes. <laughs> okay. I made Horvath. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. See? <laughs> All right. That's the show this week, everybody. <laughs> we're, we're ending there. Uh, we'll see you next time on Model Club TV. And then don't forget our live show uh, December 30th. Some cool guests are going to show up. Some cool giveaways. We'll see if we can wreck this, this holiday season. Let's see if we can wreck the internet. Yeah, yeah. So many people tuned into Model Club TV. Yeah. All right. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you next time on Model Club TV.
Scott, you ready? Hold on. Now that the puppy's gone, watch this. Watch this. This is the epitome of laziness, right? Oh here. my God. You've gotten to the point where oh. you can't even get out of your chair to close a door. You I lazy... can't. I just choose not to. So. Jesus. Hey, I fall down the stairs. I, you know, I'm a mess for crying out loud. Remember how Jim didn't make me swear? You're saying I make you swear? Yes. You're so so mean to me if you had a spaceship they would call it the fuck tardis okay <laughs> you okay who told you that joke i just made it up you did not okay